Okay. <coughs> All righty. Okay. I'm going to call to order today's uh, special board meeting with the Gateway School District Board of Directors for today, uh, December 5th, 2020. Uh, can you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? All right. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Ms. Isha, when you're ready for a roll call. Okay, I'm ready. Mr. Clary. Here. Ferrucci. Here. Mr. Delaney. Here. Mr. Gallagher. Here. Mr. Gottman. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Ritter. Here. Mr. Morning. Here. Mr. Williams. Here. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So First off, um, I'd like to just say good morning to the members of uh, the community, administration, and my fellow board members. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us this morning for today's emergency meeting. Uh, I want to start off first uh, by stating that as board president, um, I do not feel today's emergency meeting was necessary with the current pandemic we are in. However, I have listened to my fellow board members and at the direction of several board members' thoughts on the matter, I felt that this should be voted on in public as the potential decision could go against previous administrative recommendation. Secondly, this meeting is not to devalue winter sports over fall or spring sports by any means. This is in response to the consistently high and increasing cases that we have witnessed for the past month, along with these sports all taking place indoors in close contact. There was some uh, talk going on about us not valuing it, so I wanted to be clear that this has nothing to do with that whatsoever. Yeah. Mr. President? Yes, sir. I have a point of order. Go. The, uh, our policy um, 006 states, notice of all special meetings shall be given publication posting and notice at least 24 hours prior to the time of the meeting, except that such a notice shall be waived when a special meeting is called to deal with an actual emergency involving a clear and present danger to life or property. It continues, the uh, special meeting shall be public and made called for by special general purposes. The president may call a special meeting at any time and shall call a special meeting upon the presentation of request in writing of three school directors. Upon the president's failure or refusal to call a special meeting, such a meeting may be called at any time by the majority of the school directors. Yeah, speaking to the policies, the, uh, I, along with the rest of the board, received notice of this meeting at 1223 yesterday via group text. I'm unaware of the time the board meeting was posted on the district page, but I like it noted that the, the meeting with the notification to the board has not even given the board 24 hours of notice as required. Um, I'm also unaware of the means through which it was called. Are there written requests for this meeting? Is this a meeting that was called the, uh, by the president after, through urgings, and, or if it was a meeting that was called the, uh, um, which you addressed in your previous statement, the, um, the uh, but if the meetings to go forward and the public display has not been given 24 hours, then I believe that it would be uh, necessary to have some action taken to suspend our current policies. Okay. I do feel we should cover all bases. Um, so I just want to keep everything uh, legal and correct. So um, as this is something that I have not experienced on this board, I'm going to ask uh, previous board presidents and vice presidents, does this require any sort of motion to suspend? Hey, I'd maybe default that question to our solicitor also. Uh, Mr. Dice, are you on? Mr. Dice on our meeting today. Yeah, he was. He's, he's muted. I think he's driving. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Mr. Gallagher, what's the policy number you're referring to? 
Okay. Can anybody hear me? I, well, I yeah, hear Bruce. Okay. So. All right. Uh, am I correct to assume that all nine of you are on the line? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I will agree with you that there are language. There's language in that resolution that requires certain rules and regulations. Yes, you could suspend the rules, but I would suggest to you you don't have to if you're all present. If you weren't all present, then we'd have something to talk about, but you're there. Can I so, uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, this meeting has been called. I think it must be noted that all nine members got some sort of notice and let's proceed. It's Saturday morning. I, I don't, I don't think, you know, again, it, it's so noted that there's a procedural objection, but I just want to make sure the record reflects that everyone here got the notice and is participating in this meeting. May I interrupt uh, Mr. Dice? Uh, I was at administration yesterday. Mr. Gottman and myself and Dr. Short were meeting. We were supposed to start at 11 with this meeting. Brian said he was bumping it back to 1130 and on the web page by 1130. So there was notice of 24 hours. Well, I just want everybody to understand if you fail to give the notices in time, but you show up, you waive your argument that there is some defect because you're there. If you don't show up now, the next meeting, you can say, hey, wait a minute. I didn't get proper notice. Fact remains is once you show up, you waive that. Yeah, my, my main concern was that the public was given because that notice specifically refers to the public. The uh, Mrs. Warning has extended that that notice was put up in time. The uh, okay, I'm not. Sure. I don't know about that. Since I received okay. the notice an hour um, after that, which only gives a 23-hour period, I wanted to ensure that the public was given proper amount of time. The, uh, yes, so. Mrs. Isha had posted it. He was ready to go at 11, but then Mr. Gottman then postponed it to 11:30, and as of 11:30, it was posted. Thank you, Mrs. Isha. Welcome. Thank you all for those clarifications. Okay. All right. So let us let us begin. Um, I believe on the agenda we had two other sections prior to section G. Are there any? Scroll up, please. Yes. Oh, no. So it was adjusted just for section G. Okay. So uh, number four, comments from residents on agenda items. Uh, as of this morning, we have received uh, multiple emails in regards to comments. Um, so what I will be doing is I know the board has received all these emails for them to read, um, but I'm going to go through. I know some of these are relatively short. Um, to give all the residents uh, their say at the public meeting. <clears throat> so we had one from a Mr. Jason Miller stating, I believe it's grossly irresponsible to consider allowing sports and activities to practice or compete at this time. As of today, there were 911 new cases and 26 deaths reported in this county. Point of order, Mr. President, are you planning on reading all of the emails that we've received, sir? There were 13 emails. I've looked them over. I've seen one that was extremely long, others were not as long. And these are community members who wanna have their voices heard. And as this meeting is a very volatile and emotional meeting, I feel that we should be thorough and make sure everyone has a say as everyone's opinions matter. So I got well over 13 emails, Mr. President. I don't, for the record, I don't think it's fair to read some people's emails and not all. You either um, need to read all or, or none in my opinion. The emails I'm reading were all subjected with comments on agenda. And there were a lot right, less of those than there were of the general emails that we have received. So for the public, you're not reading anyone's emails who came in unless it was sent to the board comment mailbox. Correct. Yeah, Brian. Hey, this is John Ritter. Um, I'm looking at mine. I've got well over 13 and the, the subject area says RE colon panelists, special board, health and safety, sports and parents, yes. children and COVID-19 and on it. So winter athletics, 
So they don't all have the exact same comments on agenda items. There may be just 13 of those, but there are many, many more emails that came in from the public to the board, uh, to the entire if I, board. If I may, Mr. President, uh, yeah. I think what, what Brian is trying to do here is a standard procedure where we offer the floor to residents who want to speak on agenda item topics. Uh, when we are all virtual, obviously, we can't have somebody in the room. Uh, this is something we've done in the past. I understand that we, we did have an influx of uh, emails over the last couple of days uh, with people sp uh, speaking their opinion on the matter. But this is separate from that. These are specifically emails that were sent to be made as public comments during the meeting on agenda items. I think you're right, Rick. I mean, when we start a meeting, we say comments from residents on agenda items and people come up to the podium when the podium's in, you know, there. We don't have that this time. So I think it's good for Brian to read this on behalf of those folks who did submit their comments beforehand. And there's no podium for them to, a physical podium for them to speak from. So that's my opinion. Okay. Yeah, I did want to mention, I looked at the uh, on our website here for those who want to join in from the public and had the link for the Zoom. And it did say to anyone who wants to comment, please email Bonnie with the subject header regarding comments for residents on agenda items. Very so that's why I've only chose those. All right. Any, <clears throat> any other uh, concerns from my fellow board members before I continue? All right, so <clears throat> um, I'm not sure if I finished that. So yeah, I believe it's grossly responsible to consider allowing sports and activities to practice or compete at this time. As of today, this was December 4th, there were 911 new cases and 26 deaths reported in the county. At this point, we have not seen the full effect of Thanksgiving and the travel visits people had during the week. Ultimately, if the district and administration do not believe in, in person is prudent, I would permitting extracurricular activities which involve significant risk, including potential competitions with other districts, which just increases the potential for exposure. <clears throat> uh, next one. Been really short here. The purpose of the school district is the education of our students, sports and extracurricular activities are supplemental function. If the kids can't be in school for education, then they should not be in the school for these other activities. Please provide an explanation why you think that these other activities in person are acceptable to continue, but school, i.e. education itself, is not acceptable to be in person. And sports and scholarships are a poor excuse. College admissions are waiving SAT and ACT scores this year due to the lack of the availability of testing. Sports scholarships can easily take the same view. Brian, can you say, say his name? That you oh, know? Yes, I do apologize. Thank you for catching that. Uh, that was from Miss Donna Burns. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, next one comes from Miss Jeanette Beagle. I have, I'm, I'm having a really hard time understanding how it is not safe enough for our students to be in the buildings, not to mention all the staff within the buildings. Yet we are okay with letting our students practice winter sports. Please explain this rationale. <coughs> All right, this one comes from Miss Christy Miller. The consideration to allow sports and clubs to continue amid an unchecked pandemic where the county is seeing nearly a 50% positivity rate well before the expected surge is one that should not even be on the table. A school that is not safe for students to attend is one that is not safe for extracurricular activities as well. Further, this is a slap in the face to those of us who have medically complex children that were forced to keep home this year due to the pandemic and inability of leadership to provide the supports and services needed to mitigate concerns. The notion that youth sports trump my children's right to a free and appropriate education as defined by law is ludicrous. We know that virtual learning is not working for many students. The district has data to prove that. We are unable to address the primary needs of students. We should not be considering luxuries as in-person sports and activities. Instead of coming together to meet the needs of our students, we are debating continuing to perpetuate inequity amongst those in the district. There also has been a failure to address the real concerns of about potential injuries and the availability of medical care, which as you may know, is expected to decrease in the coming weeks. We all want things to return fully in person. No one is debating that, but now is not the time. Uh, short one here. This is from Miss Ellie Graves. 
On Tuesday, December 1st, Superintendent Short and the Gateway School Board of the uh, Gateway Board of School Directors met to review the COVID-19 cases in Allegheny County. Based on a significant increase in positive case counts within our community, it was decided that Gateway would continue fully remote instruction, including the cancellation of athletics. My question to all the school board directors is what conditions have changed in the past five days that would justify the members of the board to recommend that specifically? Athletic practices and competitions, but not in-person learning, either hybrid cohorts or five should resume when COVID cases continue to surge. Next one comes from Wendy Fraze. I feel that if you are, if you vote to approve and allow the all district athletic teams to practice and compete effectively immediately, you are sending a message to our gateway community that you are prioritizing sports over academics and other activities. If you feel it is safe to return to sporting events and practices, then when is the special meeting to have students back in the classroom? If it is safe to return to sporting practices and events, then when is the special meeting for other activities to begin in the school building? Uh, this next one here comes from the name here. Oh, Mindy McCurdy. The Gateway Girls Basketball Boosters would strongly encourage the board to allow athletic practices during the remote learning period until January 4th. There is so little about 2020 that is what a student athlete can normally expect during an academic year. The remote time frame without peer social interaction impacts our students. Athletics plays a huge role in gaining a sense of normalcy and structure in their daily lives. Winter sports teams are trying each to salvage season so that each team is able to compete within the Whitfield and we are able to do so. If athletes are unable to gather and practice as a team, this will put us at a disadvantage as compared to our neighboring Whitfield school. Our basketball student athletes are able to safely practice and follow all the needed COVID-19 protocols to ensure that we are practicing responsibly. Thank you for considering our request. Uh, next one is from William or Bill Fraze. This meeting should never have been called. Shame on those who want to put their short-term interests over what is best for the long-term well-being of our community. Next one we have uh, is from Miss Miss Jennifer Sobel. It should go without saying that if classroom instruction is deemed unsafe at this time, then so should all extracurricular activities such as high school sports. Please make it easy on yourselves and apply these decisions uniformly to all activities involving our students, faculty, and staff. This year, each and every one of us and our families are making sacrifices of one kind or another. Many of our needs and desires are simply on hold a responsible citizen and mature adults. We understand that our sacrifices are necessary to protect the vulnerable in our communities, to protect our shared community resources like hospital and healthcare workers, and to ensure that the freedom of our at-risk parents, friends, neighbors is not unnecessarily jeopardized by our activities. Does the school district take seriously its role as a leader in the community, applying clear and consistent guidance to its students, faculty, and staff? Why don't we all use this opportunity to teach our children social responsibility, to teach our kids about mortality or morality and loving their neighbors as well as themselves? Why don't we use our valuable platform as a school district to lead by example in our own community and take pride in the knowledge that we are doing the right thing? To sense, uh, suspend sports and other extracurricular activities every time the school district is closed for in-person instruction. All right. Uh, next one here, I'll try to summarize this one. Um, there are many people who don't take COVID-19 seriously. I constantly hear about how only 1% die and how most who get it have mild symptoms. There are many who believe that the virus, believe in the virus, but don't care because they are otherwise healthy. There are also many who take it super serious. I get the one for winter sports. I'm in that boat, but how will they be able to happen without coaches and referees? You know, the ones who may die or pass COVID-19 onto others. I'm thinking about the hospitals and what they think about this idea. I'm looking at this plan laid out for winter sports. And I'm thinking about what the community spread, which is already so high that we've had to shut down in person learning. You have winter sports and you have to open up the schools, but you're shut down. So I'm not getting a clear and concise message from this. Are we open or are we closed? The focus needs to be on how we can safely successfully get back to school. I love sports, but they're extra. People die from COVID-19. They don't die from not playing this sport for a month. It's academics first, and I'm wondering why no emergency meeting to come up with more ideas and resources for the GPA drop issue. I just recently got an email about some tutoring available, but still not enough. 
Everyone has been affected by COVID-19 in some way, shape or form. Some have lost loved ones and jobs. Some are on the brink of losing sanity. Uh, newsflash, the mental effects of the pandemic are going to be here with or without winter sports. Uh, down, so why add to the body count? And that was from, I said it before, that was from Roshonda, name on the other this email. All right, and the last one I got, and I'm going to, it is pretty lengthy, so I will I'm going to try to summarize this. Um, I'm amazed, this one comes from Murray Gottman. I'm amazed, stunned, sad, and appalled that, this, that certain board members are actually forcing this meeting to be held over this issue. Uh, what on God's green earth is going through your heads? This nation is deep trouble because of divisiveness, lack of respect for others, selfishness, greed, and a lack of leadership and good sound judgment in our government from the top on down. And now it's to reach our school district. Uh, since the beginning of this unfortunate pandemic, when restrictions were given, myself and countless others who care about their fellow man abided by what science was telling us and what officials have been pleading of us. Uh, since March, I've, ha I've had to pare down my family's religious festive holidays, only able to enjoy these holidays with just a few members of the family within the household. Whenever we had normal, larger, yeah. I did this because I care for uh, my family and others. And I'm in a position where members of my family household of four of us work in hospitals and urgent care centers. And I worry that I have pre-existing conditions and I'm over 65. And there are many people that are in the same situation. I don't like having to wear masks, but we do it anyways. Yeah. You know, now feel, you know, I, I don't like they don't feel comfortable going to my usual places to socialize, to eat or drink, but now I order takeout whenever I can. I don't like telling business owners, businesses owned by my friends and neighbors are struggling to maintain their business. I don't like help people out of work and have trouble with their everyday needs. I don't like their students have to be taught remotely how it may be affecting their learning. These are important things. Um, worrying about the, the students that are playing sports doesn't even begin to have any credence to what the school district is in existence for and what is required to, required to do for the students of the district. You know, since the beginning of mass education, the reason we send our children to school is to get an education, to learn what is needed for them to succeed in life. Our schools are not here to have them play sports. That's an extracurricular activity, not a necessity. Um, it just goes on, talk about the uh, scholarships here. Uh, I was concerned about if they won't get it because they're not playing. Uh, scouts have probably already con contacted our coach or athletic director about, about our children. Given the severity the state of our country is in with this pandemic, I'm almost certain that schools have taken into consideration these extenuating circumstances and offering and signing student athletes to their school. A uh, good idea is maybe have our children get the education so that if and when they go to college, they will be able to advance in life. An event that they also would get injured, seriously injured, God forbid, in high school, college, or if they luckily make it to the pros the education would help them in that event and uh, just conclude here with some stats here that in the past two weeks there have been uh, 98,042 new cases of the virus in PA of those 98,000 cases 1,363 people have died in Allegheny County 8,927 new cases have been reported of those 103 people have died uh, do you know any of those who perished? I did. And um, with the, uh, uh, the NFL has what they like to call a strict code protocol with daily testing. Um, as you, we all noticed, it has not worked so well given our uh, Steelers game with the Ravens being pushed back three multiple times along with the Las Vegas Raiders, Titans, San Francisco 49ers, Broncos as well. The NFL has resources of the the NFL has resources that the school district does not have. The NFL relies on maturity of adults to follow the rules and recommendations. And we see how well that's been working. But think about this as well. If it's not okay to have our students to be in class because of this, but it's okay to, for your student to play sports, then your logic is severely skewed. Also, you're having your meetings remotely. 
this defies all logic. And I will conclude with this. Uh, another thing that we have elected us to keep a watchful eye on the finances, among other things in the district. Let's say a student contracts a virus while playing sports with your blessings. That student then takes the virus home to grandma. Grandma becomes ill and possibly dies from the virus. Ask our solicitor, but at that point, we may be open to a wrongful death litigation due to the recently vetoed immunity legislation. That will open the floodgates, won't it? The payouts would be would devastate our finances, possibly create a tax increase second to none or bankrupted school district. And let's not forget the costs and fees associated with litigation. Okay, so I'd like to thank all of our community members. Excuse me, you missed court. one, Mr. President. I did? Yes. Uh, Wendy Colarusso, uh, 925 p.m. Friday from Wendy Colarusso. Comments oh. on agenda items. Okay, thank you for that. There's a lot. <laughs> Would you, well, um, her, her specifically says comments on agenda items, and she is asking why hers isn't being read. If you would like me to read it, I have it pulled up. Yes, please, because I don't see, I may have asked, hey, I'm not seeing it right now. So yes, I would more than love to have you read it. To Dr. William Short, Gateway School District Administration and Gateway School District Board of Directors, I'm writing to you today as a parent of Gateway of a high school, I'm sorry, I'm reading. I'm writing to you today as the parent of a high school student athlete and as a president of the Gateway Hockey Club regarding the possibility of continuing to operate athletic practices and games matches in spite of the temporary move to all virtual instruction. On behalf of my child and those children who are part of our club, I thank you for reconsidering and revisiting possible options for our student athletes. Our ho hockey season is quite unique in that it really bridges two seasons, fall and winter, and we often start off ice conditioning in July, on ice practices in August and games in mid-September. Our season continues typically through the mid end of February with the opportunity for additional playoff games and tournaments into March. While the start of our middle school and JV seasons were delayed by just a couple of weeks, there is a chance we could be playing into the spring this year due to game postponements. Varsity programs did not start until November 2nd this year, which was a delay of about four weeks. While hockey is not a PIAA or a WIPL sport, we do have oversight from the PIHL as well as other leagues in the area. Our middle school program is playing through the Alpha Tournament Company or ATC League. We also fall under the rules and regulations for each rink and our teams may visit our Mid-Am District affiliate as well as USA Hockey. All governing bodies from our school district up through USA Hockey take this pandemic as well as health and safety of our athletes very seriously. Their diligence as well as that of our club members, players, families, managers, coaches, and board members have been instrumental in allowing our players to enjoy their sport while also helping to mitigate the risk associated with the spreading of the COVID-19 virus. In order to begin any type of team activities back in July, all players and their parents were required to read, review, and complete a COVID-19 waiver form through the athletic department, basically absolving the district of any liability should our players, staff, and spectators contract the COVID-19 virus or any other communicable diseases as a result of team events. We were under the guidance that players could participate if this waiver was on file. We were provided with a full copy of the district's plan with regard to returning to play, which was required by the PA Department of Education and Health. Since our first conditioning in July, our board has been dedicated to ensuring the screening form was completed for all players, coaches, and managers prior to participation. Each rink has been responsible for posting their most up-to-date COVID mitigation strategies, and all parties are expected to follow. It is our responsibility to ensure our members understand and follow the strategies, including possible limitations as to parents being spectators. As a result of all of these plans and strategies, Gateway Hockey has not had a single player or coach test positive for the virus, nor have we had to cancel any practice or game since July due to having to quarantine. Our group has been very responsible in their efforts as we have had individual players and coaches who have self-quarantined without having to put remaining team members at risk. Our players have adapted well to all of the expectations and changes as they have occurred, having to play games with adjusted format, four on four versus traditional five on five, limited benches, and even full masking during competitive play. We have also ensured all of our players and coaches have been provided face coverings to use throughout the season. I firmly believe it has been these combined efforts that have kept our players on the ice without being a source of community spread. Our club has been proof that it can be done successfully. Whew, two more paragraphs. Anyone who knows me well knows that I am not a proponent of entitlement mentality. I'm a diehard believer of a strong worth ethic and earning any type of accolades and success. I also believe in the value of positive reinforcement. While I feel that with appropriate guidance and protocols in place, our children can be safe participating in any winter sport. I believe there's strong evidence that the protocols in place do work 
and will continue to work for our hockey program. Our group has worked hard, has been disciplined, and has faced many changes throughout the season so far and should be rewarded for this diligence as it has not contributed to any community spread in spite of the recent rise in case numbers. Our practice and game facilities are all outside of our community boundaries and this season happened to be limited to only four rinks in the area. The only practices and games that have been missed have been due to individual school or district directives and not directly due to any exposure or spread of the virus. I believe other athletic programs in our district can enjoy the same success with similar dedication, discipline, and cooperation. In addition, if any player or parent is not comfortable with their child participating, they should be able to choose not to participate until they feel the risk is not as great without penalty. Our players have been working hard since July and have now had to be off the ice for two weeks. Fortunately, we have only had to postpone one game at this point between our two teams. To take away hockey for even the next four weeks would put our players at enormous disadvantage as they would be expected to pick up their league schedules without possibly even getting to readjust to being back on the ice. At this moment, every team we are playing against and respectively is, is continuing athletics, even if their districts are moving to a virtual format. With all official team activities being supervised as well, we're able to offer additional level of monitoring to ensure safety protocols are being followed. This may not be the case. Um, I lost my place. While there are some beneficial team activities that can take place virtually, they are most successful when given a chance to combine with actual physical practice. We as parents make choices and decisions every day that come with some level of risk to ourselves and frequently others. Moreover, we can only be 100% sure of our own individual situations and not those of our neighbors, friends, or community members. I'm not here to argue the validity of seriousness of the virus or criticize those who may not see things the same way I do. I'm here to ask that our district and community trust us as parents to make decisions in our family's best interest and to trust us to take the necessary steps to protect those we encounter by staying home when we could be putting others at an increased risk. There are considerable studies available that indicate the regular and intense physical activity have far reaching benefits, including but not limited to improve mental, improve mental emotional well-being, increased immunity to many illnesses and diseases. To my knowledge, there's been no evidence in our state of any outbreaks having been traced back to any youth athletic events. Your time and consideration of this issue are very much appreciated. We understand you're doing your best to fulfill your duties and protect the student staff, administrators, and community members of Monroeville and Pickheron. We very much appreciate your efforts. Sincerely, Wendy Colarusso, President, Gateway Hockey Club. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ruchi, and uh, thank you again, uh, Ms. Colarusso Ford. I once again apologize that I missed it, but I'm very happy that we were able to get your comment read along with the others. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, Ms. Isha, were there any other comments that came in since we started? Double check. Um, okay. I have one from an Owen Seaman. I will forward that on to you. Okay. Um, take a second. Have you received that email yet, Brian? Um, not yet. If I may, uh, Bonnie, would you mind simply uh, reading that for uh, the sake of expediency? Yes, it says those in favor of bringing sports back, you are not paying attention to what's happening. 280,000 Americans have died. Our local hospitals are on the brink of collapse due to the lack of resources. I'm sorry, I have to analyze this. I don't know these emails. I have so many things on my screen right now. It says Gateway should be a leader in predicting our children protecting our children, children in our community and disregarding both medical experts and solicitors advice. I'm sorry, again, I can't, okay. Does not show good leadership, it's selfishness. And it's from Owen Seaman. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Seaman. All right, so with that, it's our last one here. We're gonna move to Section G, board resolutions. 
And as we have one, uh, due to this being an emergency meeting and not a study session nor a regular meeting, uh, for this to be considered on the agenda, we will need to make a motion and require only the five votes. So do I have a motion to put uh, section G on the agenda? I make, I make a motion to put this section G onto the agenda. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Mrs. Warning, second by Mr. Williams or Mr. Clary? Clary. Clary, thank you. All right, are there any questions or comments regarding putting this on the agenda? Okay, seeing none. Um, Bonnie, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Clary. Aye. Mrs. Delaney. Aye. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Gottman. No. Mr. McIntyre. Aye. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Mrs. Warning. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Clary. You mean Mrs. Cerucci? Aye. <laughs> Aye. You got me already. I eyed it. Okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Mary Beth says aye. All right, thank you. Okay, so we now have this on the agenda uh, with board resolution. Miss um, Warning, I believe this is your resolution. Would you like to read it? Uh, yes, I'm going to read for the first one an updated PIAA health and safety plan. Do you need me to read what the change has been in uh, yeah. Yes, please. So I believe it was only just one paragraph that was changed, but it'd be nice uh, for everybody no, to know. No, Mr. Gottman, there were two things that had changed okay. on okay. the safety plan. All right, um, Coach, our athletic director, Mr. Hall, he put in here, face coverings have been shown to help decrease potential exposure to COVID-19 respiratory droplets by an infected individual per Governor's Wolf recent mandate Masks slash face coverings will be worn by coaches, trainers, game staff, personnel at all time, except when an exception for the requirement to wear a mask in accordance with those listed in the governor's mandate is present. And by the student athletes at all time, except when actively participating in a game or a match, except when an exception for the requirement to wear a mask in accordance with those listed in the governor's mandate is present. In support of slash two, facilitate this requirement every student athlete and coach slash staff member must have a mask slash face covering in their possession at all times when participating in any activity on the school campus. That was an addition that was made and also it was made, to, excuse me, to uh, changes to seating capacity and social distancing may be necessary for each venue facility and will be determined in accordance with guidance slash recommendations slash mandates by the local and state governments. Those are the changes that have been made to update PIA and health and safety plan. Okay, so that, was Wait, that wasn't a motion yet, Mr. McIntyre. What? I'm sorry? That wasn't the, the motion to begin talking about this. Oh, I thought she was making, I thought we were making a motion to approve number two or number one rather. No, she was reading it first and then we're going to make the motion. All right, I, I think we're. If, if I may, I think we're going to have a, a pretty long meeting here. It's going to be uh, a lot of discussion back and forth. I think it may be prudent to deal with these two topics uh, individually. And I think because I think number one is going to have a lot less conversation, although the conversation, I believe, is necessary. And I don't want it to get washed in and, and forgotten about with the obviously heated conversation we're about to have about number two. So if I may, uh, I don't believe there's been a motion made uh, previous to mine. So I would like to make a motion to approve number one. I actually think it's a good point because even without two, having number one updated would be very important moving forward regardless. So I do agree. So we have a motion to currently pass number one. John do seconds. A, John seconds, okay. All right, do we have any questions or comments regarding to number one? Okay. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, I, unless I heard it wrong, do we have this written out somewhere? And then I read it myself. I didn't. Val, was this? Yes. Was this 
I didn't Ms. see it. Yes, Mrs. Delaney, it is in the board docs and on review. Okay. It has been updated. Okay. okay, because I'm going to just kind of paraphrase from one part you said about having mass or having them in your possession. It didn't, the way I'm reading that, it didn't mean you had to have it on. But no, it's saying, they're saying they have them on, but they will have them in their possession at all times. So, yeah, I guess, okay, because the way I'm looking at that, have them in their possession to me, of course, like you said, have them on, but, and then another part, when they are playing, they, we are saying they don't have to have the mask on. Am I understanding that correctly? No. That's what it says, yes. Okay. And uh, Mrs. Delaney, you did get this email. It came from Bonnie Isha. It's called Special Board Meeting, Saturday, December 5th. It came in yesterday. That would be Friday the 4th at 1.26 p.m. in your email. Okay, thank you, because I did not see that. Thank you. We, we got a lot of emails. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right. I, I did read all of, in fact, the ones that, that uh, Brian read. I read all of those, but I did not read Bonnie's. I'm exactly. sorry. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Mr. President, can I make a, a comment? Yeah, sure. This is a reiteration of a comment I made on the original health and safety plan. They, uh, whenever, so this doesn't affect the changes that are made in this, but just a, a, a continued thought from then um, under our requirements, number three is promoting of hygiene such as washing hands. Yeah, so we're only requiring people to promote that. The uh, number five, we're only promoting the encouragement of social distancing rather than just simply requiring social distancing, which is what the PIAA is stating needs to happen. Uh, and so I, I, I still just uh, restate my objection to the original document that we promote to encourage, which is in effect nothing. Very good point. Uh, Mr. Hall, are you still on? I am. All right. Is there a way we can reword it so that we're requiring the washing of hands and the requiring of, uh, I guess, the distancing instead of just promoting it? Uh, yes. Uh, it, certainly, the social distancing we can require in all our venues, and we can reword that as such. Um, the the washing of hands, uh, again, the reason that the wording is as it is 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 not to make it less of impact, but rather the fact that we don't control every adult who uses a washroom or a restroom. And we can't, you know, we can't have a, we don't have a police officer in our, in our, you know, available. And I'm not trying to be glib but to, to, you know, ensure that people wash their hands. Um, that we can't mandate hand washing uh, by law. Uh, we can mandate within our facilities on our campus, social distancing and, and enforce it with our own personnel with, without any outside police personnel, because again, uh, that is not something that the local law enforcement has chosen to uh, um, to um, enforce on site. But okay. we can make the wording that will require social distancing within any venues or any activities that we uh, are managing. I'll make All that right. change. Hey, thank you. Mr. Garman, if I could also add, um, very similar to what we did with Anna Marino Stadium, uh, we will ensure that we have signage posted uh, within our venues uh, that we indicate social distancing will occur and is mandated. All right, excellent. Thank you both. All right, do you have any other questions or comments with the now updated, updated health and safety plan? Uh, yes. Um... And forgive me, and, and I'm in, kind of in the same position as uh, Mrs. Delaney here. <laughs> uh, we did have, we received a tremendous number of emails. I, I'm having trouble pulling up the actual uh, wordage and the change here. So uh, Val, I may have to, if you still have it up, I may be asking you to, to read a few things just to clarify. Um, <laughs> I, and I appreciate that. Um, as Mrs. Delaney pointed out, uh, the wording for the mask requirement uh, that, that's something that stood out to me. Would you mind terribly reading that section again? No, I don't I mind. It says face coverings have been shown to help decrease potential exposure to COVID-19 respiratory droplets by an affected individual. Per Governor's Wolf recent mandates, masks slash face coverings will be worn by coaches, 
trainers, game staff, personnel at all time, except when an exception for the requirement to wear a mask in accordance with those listed in the governor's mandate is present. And by student athletes at all time, except when actively participating in a game or match, except when an exception for the requirement to wear a mask in accordance with those listed in the governor's mandate is president, present. And okay, so thank, thank you. I think that was fairly craftily worded. Um, and whoever wrote that did a fairly good job. Uh, however, I would ask Dr. Short, um, you've you've been pretty much on the ball on the ball on all these changes that are coming seemingly every hour from the, the state level. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, what is the mandate regarding masks uh, for being indoors in the state of Pennsylvania? And is there any uh, exception made for athletics? Uh, in other words, how are we handling this as a district as far as when people are in our buildings, whether they are participating or not, uh, are they required by law to wear a mask? Uh, masks should be worn at all times. Uh, as far as competitions, uh, we would seek the advice of our council during that process. But also we would need to talk to the uh, team that we would be playing in order to ensure that both teams uh, agree to the mask rule. If not, we would then contact the WPI or PIAA in, in terms of those individuals uh, wanting to witness, uh, be a spectator during one of our events, mask must be worn at all times. So I think obviously with uh, with the exception of swimming while they're in the water, I think a mask would actually be uh, hazardous at that point. Are, are we, is, is it your recommendation that if, if we adopt this change to the policy that it will be mandated that participants wear masks as well uh, whenever possible, if you that will? That would be my recommendation. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I, I, I think that should be something that's directly worded and stated maybe in this uh, resolution. I do know that the um, PIAA is holding a meeting next week, and I'm sure there will be some further guidelines and recommendations on that specific um, mask wearing uh, mandate uh, from Governor Wolf's office that affects individual sports such as uh, basketball and or wrestling. Uh, uh, another question for you, Dr. Short. Um, when we developed and approved this health and safety plan over the summer, um, it, it's my understanding this was to be used in tandem with our reopening plan uh, that was approved by the board uh, and moving forward. And is there anything in the health and safety plan that denotes when uh, postponement would happen uh, according to you know COVID numbers and restrictions and recommendations from the state? Well, th there was early on within the PIAA health and safety plan, a Keller coded system that was adopted by Governor Wolf and ultimately P uh, PDE and the Allegheny County Health Department. Uh, however, that has since been replaced multiple times with uh, uh, different issuance of uh, guidance, uh, most recently being the uh, PDE COVID dashboard that is being utilized and, and also related to our attestation form that was recently signed uh, by the board president and also um, myself, which was sent off to uh, PDE. Thank you, Dr. Short. Um, as you said, you know, I, I, I know that the, we keep saying this, these things keep changing seemingly every hour. Um, when that red, you know, the, the color coded yeah. system was replaced, um, am I correct in, in assuming that you as superintendent adopted the substantial moderate uh, scale uh, for being the threshold for when we have school uh, in the hybrid model versus all virtual, thus canceling activities as well? Th that is correct. Uh, from probably September, uh, the onset of school starting uh, up until November, I believe 23rd. Uh, we were in a moderate range in Pennsylvania as designated by the COVID dashboard. 
since then, um, I, I'm sure everyone's aware of that we have seen a significant increase, uh, surge in COVID cases, but also um, percentile rates associated with that. Uh, most recently, um, the PDE dashboard came out yesterday. Uh, just to give everyone an idea, uh, while we were in the moderate phase, uh, uh, the, the case count per 100,000, I believe, was um, hovering around 50 to 75. Uh, most recently, it was up above 300. And the positivity rate uh, for the first time went above 10% and is now at 13.5, which puts us in substance. Or, uh, substantial. Okay, so my my issue here, okay, is we are uh, updating a the health and safety plan, and there is clearly language still in that health and safety plan that is outdated and is no longer useful as written. Um, I and I would recommend that when if and when we make these changes, they should reflect the moderate. Uh, and substantial categories, as you as you mentioned through the dashboard, mm -hmm. uh, because that is the the precedent that's being set by the superintendent's office, and being the threshold for when we decide to pursue or to proceed or to delay. Having said that, um, I don't think it's appropriate for us at this time to even uh, entertain the idea of pass of, of approving this proposed change. Because in a sense, if we approve this and then approve number two, we'd be approving a, approving a resolution that's in direct conf conflict with what we were passing and approving with the first resolution. Is there a limit to how many times we can update our health and safety plan? No limit. And can we do that at any time we deem necessary? May I speak uh, to that? that yes, please. Thank you. Um, we, we can we can up it, 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 the very first paragraph in the in the health and safety plan uh, directly references the fact that it's a fluid document that will change as change is needed. I, I don't believe we're in direct conflict with it. We removed the red, yellow, green stuff that used to be in place for, you know, implementing athletics in, in tandem with schools opening or not reopening. Um, right now, anything that's in that document, I don't believe is in conflict with anything that uh, that the school is doing Here, here's a key distinction um, and I'm not sure where the right time to bring it up but here's the key distinction and, and let me ask you to give this perspective to many of the commentary and many of the issues that were brought up if this pandemic had occurred 20 years ago and we didn't have the ability to go to school virtually or remotely uh, would we have just said let's not go to school or would we have said you know, let's continue to go to school despite potential risk for spreading this disease. Um, that's basically the question we have. You can't conduct sports remotely. You can't do them virtually. You can't Zoom them. If we didn't have the option to Zoom school and Google Meet, Google Classroom, uh, which is phenomenal and has helped in many cases, obviously, um, then this wouldn't be an option on the table. We'd be asking a whole different question. And I don't think anybody on the board would say, let's shut down the school and not educate our kids. Um, so the, the, the comparative is not if we're closing the school, and again, I'm, I'm going on a little bit of a rant, but the, it's not that we're, are we shutting down the school and, and letting them play sports? We're, we're basically saying, are sports important enough to continue to do in the safest manner possible because you can't go to a Zoom platform to play basketball or to swim? And that's why it's different than just saying, hey, is the school open? yes, then sports are open. Is the school closed? Well, the school's closed because we have a great alternative and option uh, to go ahead and, and remotely and virtually teach and learn, and that's phenomenal. But we don't have that option in sports. Uh, and again, I'm not sure where that fits into either resolution, but I just wanted to make that distinction. Yeah. Very well said, thank you. I would like to make a motion to call the question because this issue isn't really while we're here and we can continue to update the health and safety plan at future meetings. I had a point of clarification for something that's in the document. If I could, if I could ask that respectfully. Yes. The uh, um, it's good to have a, a analogies for things that we we do not know the answer to. But this one, I, I think that we have a, a little bit of an answer when it comes to masks. 
Um, the order from the state, the uh, section two, part D, participating in indoor physical activities in a gym, fitness center, or group fitness classes, where another person or persons who are not of the members of the individual's household are present in the same space, irrespective of physical distance. That's the requirement. The exceptions for that they are whenever a mask could interfere with your conducting of your work. The, uh, so I think it would be a determination upon our athletic director if a mask the, uh, inhibits the ability to perform that, that work. And I don't need an answer for that. I was just clarifying the question was asked what the state mandate was. So I was just reading that. All right. Thank you, Mr. Gallagher. Okay, I don't know um, if you heard me say I like a make a motion to call the question because I said this isn't really why we're here. We could um, discuss the health and safety plan of future meetings. So, yes, sir. did you hear me say that? Yes, I did. The health, self, health and safety plan amendment. Uh, it's on the agenda. I don't understand the argument that that's not why we're here. I we're, still have I, I still have a lot of uh, issues with this uh, wording. Is there a second to my motion? I make a second. Everybody's ignoring me. I'm not, I'm not ignoring you at all. I just hear that you're making a motion here. And, and Mr. Gallagher wanted to get a comment in. So I want, I want to make sure everyone has a chance, chance to speak on everything here. He made a what's called a point of clarification, and that's legitimate. Yes. Even when the question is called. Yes. Let uh, me... Go ahead, Mr. McIntyre. I, I'm sorry, Val. Um, uh, if I may, Mr. Gottman, I just I just want to continue through what I, what I, my list of issues with this resolution. Um, Excuse and, me. A point of order: When you have a motion and a second, you must proceed to vote on that call for the question. So at this point, the the president needs to vote to make a vote to proceed on my motion with a second. Mr. Dice, would you like to weigh in here? Mr. Dice? He's on let's mute. Let's just give him a minute to pull over if he's driving and then unmute himself. I didn't hear who seconded the motion. Okay, can you, can you hear me now? Yes, you know, I seconded it. Okay, somebody's got to get faster on the switch on unloading and mooting. <laughs> what I understand is there's been a motion to uh, call for the question. A second was made. At that point, you're required to proceed to a vote on whether or not the call for the question is going to be upheld. If it's upheld, the discussion is over and you must go forward and vote on the matter. If it's not, so there's two votes to be taken. Motion to proceed, or rather call for the question second. Now, there's no other discussion. You have to proceed to vote on that. If the vote is to, to uh, confirm the call for the question, then you must go to the question that's being called and vote on it. Without additional discussion. Did you get it all? I got it. Okay. Because there's a big N on my board and I don't know, I don't know, this is craziness. I'm, I'm having difficulty. Are we allowed um, to have a discussion on the call to question? There, no, no, once, no, once it's made, that's it. So we're gonna proceed What's to a vote on discussing that actual vote, not the that, vote. That's the, that's the that's the point of a call for the question. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Dice. So, so it's, it's a roll call at this point. Yes. I'm ready, okay. everybody ready? Do you have your motion in second, Ms. Isha? Yes, I have the motion by Mary Beth Sarucci and second by Mr. Clary. Okay, all right. Whenever you're ready, Ms. Isha. Mrs. Delaney. I'm a little confused on this whole thing. I'm going to vote no. Mr. Gaffer. No. 
I, Valerie, are you talking? No. Bruce, can you mute yourself, please? Thank you. Mr. Gallagher. No. Mr. Gottman. Aye. Mr. McIntyre. No. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Mrs. Warning. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Clary. Aye. Mrs. Ritchie. Aye. Motion carried. Yes. Okay. Well, we have to do number two now. No. Now you actually have to vote on it. Vote on what? We, we separated between one and two. So now we have okay, to. Okay. So what we did was two. I just made a motion to call the question. Calling the question means that you actually vote on the updated health and safety plan. So by calling the question, I ended the discussion and now you have to vote on number one. Okay. I think somebody said you wanted to vote on them separately. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Uh, and now you would vote on number one. Uh, Brian, were you voting just now on approving number one, or were you voting on the call to talk, call to question? On the call to question. Okay. So now we're going to vote to see if we are going to pass only section one of this. Only number one, that's correct. Yes. So do we have a motion to pass number one? We already have had a motion. We already okay. have a motion, Mr. Mack. And a second. And Mr. Ritter. Second. Okay, so now we could do the roll call then? Yes. Okay, let's go for roll call. Mr. Gallagher? No. Mr. Gottman? No. Mr. McIntyre? No. Mr. Ritter? Aye. Mr. Williams? Mr. Williams? Aye. Mrs. Morning? Aye. Mr. Clary? Aye. Mrs. Cerucci? Aye. Mrs. Delaney? No. Motion carries. Aye, four. Okay. All right, now we're moving on to number two. Uh, Ms. Warney, since you've read number one, you want to read number two? Uh, yes, that's very simple. Athletic practices and competition is to approval to allow <coughs> athletic teams to practice and to compete effective immediately. Okay, thank you. Uh, to begin discussion, do I have a motion? John makes the motion. Do I have a second? Susan? Second. Yeah. Motion by Mr. Ritter, second by Mrs. Delaney. Now, as this is the hot topic of today, um, <clears throat> I'm going to actually set a little expectations here. Um, everyone has a lot to say about this, so what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to pull a page that uh, Mrs. Ruchi used uh, earlier on when we did remote. And in person is that we're gonna go around the room. So everyone has a chance to speak. Um, we can keep taking turns as needed, but I want everyone to be able to make their comments. Also, because of how emotional this is, um, I want to just remind everyone to let's do our best, keep this civil, and remember that we are here to represent the district, our community, and our students. So I'll also ask you if you refrain from any yelling and any attacks amongst any other board members. Are we okay with all that? Absolutely. Okay. So let's get this started. And um, well, I'm do, since Ms. Warney, you read the resolution, since this is your resolution, I'm gonna let you go first. Okay, I'm just going to, I feel we are at fault if we don't at least give them the opportunity to try. We have all the protocols in place. If we do have a breakout as what happened in football, it would be shut down immediately. Um, as one of our board members had asked uh, our athletic director, Mr. Hall, to send an update of how they handled the temperature taking and the um, questionnaire for every practice. I believe it was close to 12,000 um checks that all the teams did that was including tennis football cheerleading all the 
fall sports, even the middle schools. So that is, everything is on hand there. And yes, I understand the issue with the numbers. I am not, you know, looking down on that, but I don't feel I'm not, what's the word? I am not educated to say that this is coming in from our kids, that they're bringing in the virus, but you see the teams that we already have right now, the boys and girls basketball are playing elsewhere, um, practicing, and they have been doing that for several weeks. Everything has been okay there. And I just feel as a district, we are wrong if we don't at least give them the opportunity to try. Okay, hey, thank you, Ms. Warning. Uh, next up, I'm gonna have Mr. McIntyre. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, just give me a moment here to pull my, I, I did try to organize my thoughts. Um, uh, just to reiterate what, what Mr. Gottman said uh, in opening the discussion here, th this is obviously a very hot topic. There's gonna be passion and arguments made from both sides here. Um, uh, to quote something I always like to quote from, uh, from Coach Hall, uh, let's make sure we rep the G. We are you know, representing Gateway School District and the community that elected us to be that representative. So with that, I'm just gonna proceed with what you know my opinion is on the matter. And I anxiously await to hear everybody's argument on this. And I, I'm confident that this board is professional enough to have a very good discussion here and, and make a decision. So moving forward, um, I think, you know, being that everybody's going to probably think going to have something to say here, I think in, in knowing what we've seen already uh, with some discussions made on social media and the interactions between us, I believe uh, what we're going to hear in support of this measure uh, is, is a multi-pronged ap approach. And one of those things that we're, I think we're going to hear today is that allowing sports to continue is in the best interest of the mental health and well-being of our students. Well, if that's the case, why is the resolution written for only sports? What about chess club, uh, student council, uh, the Black Student Union, you know, all the other activities, uh, orchestra, all the other things that facilitate uh, that kind of activity that is beneficial to the mental health and well-being of our students. Another point that most, most likely will be made is that practices will be voluntary. Anyone who has participated in competitive sports will tell you that that scenario simply does not exist in the real world. This policy will give an advantage to those willing to go against the advice of the health department over those that aren't. I can under, not understand how that situation is good for their mental health. We will hear statistics present, presented in an attempt to say COVID is not a significant risk for kids. This is not only untrue, it is unreasonably limited in its scope to the point of negligence. We have staff to consider as well as the families of those students. There are significant risks for high school age kids getting COVID. Lifelong consequences to the health of the student and life threatening consequences to their families. And I'd like to note that these risks are notably higher among the African American community. We will hear that we have a waiver for students athletes to sign. I believe any attorney will tell you that those waivers do not protect the district against a gross negligence or wrongful death lawsuit. We will hear that strict protocols will be in place. Well, we had them in place this fall, but we still saw multiple outbreaks amongst the teams that were competing, eventually causing it's at least one point for the entire high school to go all virtual. And I want that's a point I really want to let sink in. Every student on the high school hybrid option lost days of in-class instruction as a direct result of COVID positive cases among athletic teams. We will hear that a number of neighboring districts are moving forward with the winter sports program, and we would be making a mistake not to follow suit. This argument has already been presented by the same board member that summarily dismissed what other districts were doing during the debate on curtailing re facility rentals. And for the record, in my opinion, that is an actual example of the pot calling the kettle black. We will hear that postponing sports will hurt student athletes chances of receiving scholarships. Well, what are we doing for the non-athletes? What are we doing to provide the extracurricular activities those students need 
in order to compete, to compete for college acceptance and scholarships. We will hear emotional appeals about how these students have, have how much these students have had taken away already. And this is absolutely true. And, and I really, I know everybody in this room, we don't all agree on this, but I'm confident in saying that nobody here is arguing against that. Nobody here is arguing that our kids are not suffering. But why are we only holding an emergency meeting on a Saturday with 23 hours notice in order to address the small percentage of our student body that participates in high school sports and neglecting the rest. The athletes are not the only ones who have suffered. What we will not hear tonight or today is a logical argument that explains why this board should declare it safe for a gateway student athlete to wrestle while we are maintaining that it is not safe for that very same student to attend math class in a mask at a sanitized workstation no closer than six feet away from the closest person. We will not hear an explanation as to why we pay close to a half a million dollars a year for our superintendents to run the district if we are simply going to ignore the recommendations on how to run the district. We will not hear an explanation why we pay our solicitor and his team to provide legal counsel if we are going to simply ignore the advice offered. We will not hear a reason why we are no longer committed to the reopening plan set forth by administration after a tremendous amount of work by doctors Chakey Rossi and Short, and unanimously approved by this board, or why the accompanying, health, the accompanying health and safety plan attached to that reopening is being disregarded in our first resolution, by, follow, you know, followed by an update to that plan with, well, I had that backwards because we switched it. <laughs> I don't believe we will hear an explanation for these issues because they simply don't exist. In summation, it is my opinion that this board should heed the advice of health officials, state recommendations, as well as our administration and solicitor. I want to sincerely plead with my fellow board members to approach this matter with logic and rationality while setting the emotional aspects aside. It is our number one priority as, as school directors to protect the district, the community, and our tax dollars. A decision to open the district up to a number of potential lawsuits that could conceivably lead to a situation where Gateway will be left in, in a financial crisis is irresponsible. And look, nobody here wants to punish these kids. Everyone here wants a, a return to normalcy. Unfortunately, every, in, every indicator available is screaming at us right now that this is not the time. Forcing normalcy into a pandemic that we like the one we are in right now is like going to the beach during a hurricane. Nobody here wants to be the bad guy who says no basketball, no swimming, no wrestling. I get that. I don't want to be that guy either. However, this is the role we all signed up for when we circulated our first petition and I'm willing to take that hit, so to speak. I have no hesitate hesitation in saying, Hey, look, it really sucks, but in the interest of protecting the district and the community, it would be irresponsible to allow winter sports to continue while we are all in while we are all in an all virtual learning model. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. Mr. Caleri. Yeah, I wanted to start off by saying I, I found it a little surprising that of the emails that were chose to be read. I mean, I read a lot of emails that were asking us to a lot of play sports, but was it 10 of them that were picked to be read were against this. Um, so just to get that little agenda out of the way. Um, we do have safety protocols in place and we did sign on to be school board members to make decisions that were in the best interest of our students, the parents, the school district in general. Um, but I did not sign on as a school board director to tell a parent what they should do for their child with their child. I don't, I want not be arrogant enough to tell another a parent what's the best thing for their child. Now we do have protocols in place that if um, God forbid somebody would contract this virus while playing a sport, obviously that sport would be shut down and uh, more, mitigating, uh, more mitigating efforts would take place. Um, and at the same thing, I'm all for, for the clubs also. If the clubs could present us with something that we know they would be safe, I'd be all for letting the clubs, um, chess club and whatever, um, participate. Um, but that's not what we've heard of. Um, 
we received over the last two or three days, I didn't count all the emails. I didn't think I would need to, um, that were both for and against this. Um, but overwhelmingly what, what I am basing a lot, mo all of my decision on are parents that were just asking us to allow them to be parents and do what is in the best interest of their child. And I am not going to step over that line and tell somebody, I know what's better to, for you and for your child than what you know is better for your child. Um, that's just not a fair argument to make. Um, and that's not a place that I want to be into. Um, you know, everybody, people are asking, well, what are we doing for non-athletes? Again, I say, I'll do everything that I can, you know, we, we have to, by state mandate, you know, we, we've made adjustments. Parents can go hybrid, parents can use the gate program, parents can go um, completely virtual. Um, but for our, our athletes, it's either you can or you can't, um, where I'm all for allowing a parent to be a parent and make that decision. By making a decision to go forward with the sports, we are not mandating that children have to play those sports. We are simply allowing the parents and the child an opportunity to make that decision for themselves and to be accountable for their safety also, as well as the safety as others. And I have every um, reassurance that and, and that's going to happen because I can tell you um, if I let in my child play a sport, I'm going to. Um, another point to that is, you know, we've we've back and forth. I don't remember if it was just I just heard it, if it was in emails about the underprivileged kids. So the more privileged children are going to have an opportunity to play club sports that we've already seen happen, that we have no control over at all. Whereas children's their par parents may not be able to afford those club sports. Um, well, they're just out of luck. You know, there's nothing that they can do about it. Um, so this again, this isn't about what's right and what's wrong. This is about allowing our parents and their children to make a good decision for themselves and still provide the guidance, safety, and protocols that we can. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clary. Uh, Mr. Gallagher. Thank you, Mr. Goffman. The, uh, um, I did prepare something, but I just want to be able to clarify something the, uh, that was just brought up for the, for the public's um, understanding. The, on the announcement posted on the district website, um, the reason why not all emails that we received were read is it clearly states public comments will be accepted before and during the meeting in the following forms. The, uh, one of which is to send to GSD underscore school, school board underscore comments at gatewayk12.org. And I believe it was um, the president's decision to read the ones that came in through that, which are the ones that um, were forwarded to us all. So it wasn't picking and choosing of emails. It was following the protocol that we have with all of our meetings since we haven't been in person. Um, also for clarification, the health and safety plan that we put forward is listed as co-curricular athletics and co-curricular. So the presentation of that plan should have included the, the clubs and everything in this motion, but the, uh, I digress. And um, I put together these statements this morning because I wanted to make sure that I did not come to my decision or my rationale prematurely. The, I wanted to give everybody the opportunity to speak to me through email, text, phone calls. Uh, so I want to start by saying that I've read all the emails we've received. I've followed all the links that have been included in the emails and I followed up on all the information provided where, where it was possible in regards to studies that were referenced in those emails. The, uh, I feel for all of our students, our families and the entire community. And I hope that everybody can appreciate the difficult decisions that's before us all. Sometimes we make decisions that affect our students, staff and families directly. Decisions such as this extend well beyond the norm and that it has an effect on the entire Gateway community and beyond this community. I also wanna express that the PIAA and the WPIL have not given as much direction for winter sports as they did in the fall. There were some pushbacks and challenges that occurred in the starting of the season and practices, whereas now 
even in the midst of an increase in the pandemic, there are little changes in guidance given by the PIAA and WPIL. I don't say this to disparage either organization. I only mean to point out that, that some of the decisions that we made previously, they are based on that input are no longer possible today. From the emails, texts, and calls that I've received, there's been a clear majority they, uh, they believe that if classrooms are closed, then the rules should be applied equally across all activities. Case counts are exponentially increasing, and we've yet to see the Thanksgiving surge, which will be built upon a, another holiday season surge, right in the midst of a season. Decisions made in the fall, which are the same recommendations that were made by the administration in its current letter, should be continued for the well-being of the entire community. Oftentimes I've heard it said that the school board focuses too much attention on athletics. Having a special meeting to address athletics supports that notion when there are other activities not covered by the motion which is presented. There's no opening of clubs, activities, competitions such as Winter Guard or Winter Perk, et cetera. This motion covers none of those, which means groups such as the chess club must remain virtual while others at high level risk, according to the CDC, PA Health Department, PIAA, and our own health and safety plan can begin. There's also the argument that our facility is separate from the school. That is true, and it is a benefit, but so is Forbes. While, yet while we're remote, our students cannot go to that separate building and receive the required hours they need in order to be licensed, or in some cases, gain employment based on the hands-on hours required. As to the motion itself, I believe it's inherently flawed. This motion, is, if approved, does not take into account any future changes by the state, county, local, PDE, or other governing bodies. As it's written, if approved, we will be giving the green light for winter sports to continue without interruption with the only guidance of the now approved health and safety plan, which continues to the uh, need. We made one of those alterations need need to have some changes in the language. It's been stated that we will be open to liability. A lot's been said about the financial implications of a lawsuit. I want to remind us all that if a lawsuit in this case <clears throat> will only come from extreme illness or in the worst case, someone's death. It isn't the financial implications that's the cause of that potential liability. It's been shared to avoid liability. The waivers must be signed. The waiver is not concrete or impenetrable. I may sign a waiver and still have a case. I may sign a waiver, but persons whom I infect my coworkers don't necessarily have agreed that I have signed off on that waiver. I have confidence in our solicitor, but a case brought is far case brought from a harm to a person has financial impacts, whether it's won or lost. And lastly, I don't want to inhibit anyone. No one on this board does. No one takes comfort in remote learning, hybrid learning, or any of the options available to us. And I am thankful that we don't have to make the, the same decision that they made in 1919 during the, that pandemic where schools were closed for 15 weeks. That decision has to have to be made. At the same time, I need to look at this logically. Sometimes I do that too much. But if we're following the guidelines from the state and the Department of Ed in some areas, why are we not gonna follow them in all areas? Such as stated in our health and safety plan, the Gateway School District will take necessary precautions and recommendations from the federal, state, and local governments, CDC, PA Department of Health, as well as the <laughs> NFHS and PIAA. It does not say that we will take recommendations from either or it states them collectively. A vote for this, uh, vote in favor of this motion is in direct contact, contrast to the plan that we just approved. I yield my time. All right. Thank you, Mr. Gallagher. Uh, Mr. Williams. Thanks, Brian. Uh, not to be redundant, but like I said before, this is a no win. 
And even before the pandemic hit, we couldn't please everyone. We still have people that wish we were open five days a week right now. And we still have people that even though we could be open five days a week, they would still want to be virtual the whole time. I just feel that it's in the best interest of us and the people I've spoken to that we should give the parents the option whether or not they wish their kids to participate in any extracurricular activity. And that's all I have. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Mrs. Delaney. Yes, Brian, thank you. Mr. Gottman, rather. Uh, let me start. I, I, I'm going to summarize a lot of things that I would ordinarily say. Uh, I'm just looking at yesterday's update, 12420 from the COVID-19 data for Pennsylvania. Total cases, 398, 6,000. Uh, negatives, 2,893,321 uh, recovered 58% and then total uh, PCR test 5,859. So anyway, we all know that the pandemic is surging. There is nothing that we can do about that seemingly because we're, I mean, we're not directly responsible for the pandemic, but we are responsible for actions we take. And when I say that, I'm going to state with you four areas that I look at and as I listen to what parents were saying, particularly parents and other stakeholders. My first area is education. My second is leadership. My third is responsibility or lack thereof. My fourth is referring to winter sports and athletics. Now, if I wanna really go back and I'm not going to go into that in detail, public education. Public education is defined according to the public school review as a federally funded school administrated to some extent by the government and charged with educating all citizens. So that's why I said my first point is education. And I don't think any of you at this point are unaware that I have been an educator for many, many years. That has and always will be my first priority. Having said that, listening to parents and other stakeholders, leadership, decision-making. Yes, we were elected officials to be on this board to make decisions, those difficult decisions, which can and do reflect all of our students and even parents. And in doing so, to have the schools not in session, but yet saying it is okay for sports to practice within those same schools that are not in session. Yes, I definitely have a problem with that. And that's why I look at when parents and stakeholders call us irresponsible and they have. And then thirdly, well, that was thirdly was the irresponsibility. But in doing so, when we talked back about when the pandemic did surge back a hundred or more years ago, 19, 18, 19, 19, and Don Hall, our athletic director said, we do have options now because with education, we can go remote, we can be virtual. We, according to him, can't be that way with our sports. So sports, obviously schools were shut down and sports. And unfortunately, had this been maybe 25 years ago, yes, schools would have to have been shut down for the safety and well-being and health of all our students. And as I said, we need to be prior, uh, prioritizing, I'm sorry, because yes, winter sports, summer sports, fall sports, whatever you wanna call them, they are important to the mental and the even physical uh, show so well-being of all our students. I get that and I appreciate that. I was a, I am and, and was very active when my kids were in sports and they were, they were boys and, and that was something that they wanted uh, on, as well as other clubs and not just sports. But as a parent, yes, I made certain decisions that would affect them, but I looked to the school board for leadership in making those decisions that are and will be implemented to affect all of our students. So should parents be making those decisions? That is on them. If they wanna keep them to play outside at other places, at other facilities, fine. But as far as within our school, no, not if we're going to have our school closed. And then again, 
we are looking at the fact that sports, and that was other research that I'd done, when did sports even get started? It did not start when education started, because go back to my first statement that said, the purpose of public education is educating all our citizens. It didn't say teaching all of them to play sports, but as I said, I'm not belittling the fact that sports are important for the mental and physical and social well-being. But we, again, taking back to my other two terms, leadership and responsibility, we were elected officials in order to carry out certain leadership and responsible roles to all of our stakeholders. And I don't feel by allowing sports to continue and not allowing even in school to continue, I don't feel that is being responsible. And there's no way I think you can convince me otherwise. I'm through. Hey, thank you, Mrs. Delaney. Mrs. Rucci. Wow, okay. So I'm gonna be brief because I think everybody's probably tired of listening to us. We've debated this off and on. I think most people know where I stand. If they don't, they can visit my Gateway School Board Facebook page and see where I stand. I would just say that I agree uh, with a lot of things my colleagues said, both those who are in favor and who are not in favor. Uh, actually, you know, as elected officials, um, I don't believe that we're dictators. I, I, I still believe in personal freedoms. So I believe that parents have the right to decide what's best for their children, not me. I think most people know I support moving forward with athletics but I really understand the argument about if the school shut down you know why is athletics so I'm actually in favor of uh, allowing parents to decide if uh, their kids can participate in other things like band or clubs and I also support our children returning to school as soon as possible I've always felt that our k-6 to kids should be in the classroom and especially our special ed students should be in the classroom five days a week so I would support those motions uh, as well um, in regards to going against admin recommendations, I mean, that happens all the time. That happened when several of our colleagues voted for the athletic trainer. Uh, that was not an administrative uh, recommendation. So, you know, we have tough decisions. I know that we're not all going to agree on this issue because, you know, there's strong feelings on both sides. So for me, the only option is to let parents decide what's best for their families. And that's where I'm going to fall on this vote. Thanks. Thank you, Mrs. Hodges. Mr. Ritter. So yes, thanks for the public input. Many notes were sent to the school board. However, only the ones that were submitted under the protocol comments from residents on agenda items were read publicly. Some members of the district, uh, based on all the emails and the uh, comments that we got, some members of the district are in favor of conducting athletic programs and other programs and activities. Some members of the district are in favor of not conducting athletic programs or other programs and activities. So it falls on the this board as a, a joint group to show leadership um, one way or the other. And uh, as one of the other board members said, we're not gonna please everybody and we understand that. So here's my stance. If any player or parent is not comfortable with their child participating or with them participating either in athletics or other clubs or activities, they should have the freedom to choose not to participate until they feel that the risk is, is minimal. So um, I would be happy based on that to offer an amendment either to the current motion or offer a subsequent motion that causes other school programs and extracurricular activities to be held as well. I think it's wise though for first, us first to consider the motion that we have in front of us because if we can't offer the ability for sports to continue, then it, it does not make sense for us to entertain another uh, a subsequent motion for uh, extracurricular activities to occur as well. However, since they are both the, the two sides of the same coin, I'd be happy to offer the amendment. But the question is, um, which which way will the board go? And so I'm curious to hear what the rest of the board members have to say about this. And then at the conclusion of that, uh, I'll be willing to offer my amendment to the current motion to add other school programs and extracurricular activities to the current motion. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Mr. Ritter. Uh, I believe it's everyone, so I'll give my thoughts on this. Um, anybody who knows me knows I love sports. You know, I, I have something on regarding sports every day, watch all Steeler games, even been participating in sports since I was a student at Gateway and up through college and even now doing a, a church league softball. 
Um, and whenever I heard my softball league was being canceled, it, it hurt, but there's nothing I can, I could do. You know, this, uh, this virus thing going on is out of my control. It's out of my league's control. We have to go with what's been given to us. Uh, however, you know, I knew it was canceled and I just kept moving on and was hoping for next year. And I also understand the value of practice, you know, coming right off without any practice does increase injury. I'm very well aware of that. The situation that we, that we're in right now is gone, gone way out of control since our school year started and even more so during last year for the spring sport, sports. You know, if, you know, people can take the numbers, look at them however they want. And so I'm just going to go with what they, with just as they are. We have seen the numbers from spring, from fall to now, exponentially increase to the point where other states are shutting many things down. Our state is re-implementing certain regulations and restrictions to try to curve all this. I said from the beginning, in order for us to get back to normalcy, we have to do our part. And our part doesn't, we don't pick and choose our parts of how we do this. So it's, it's an all or nothing. You know, I'm a previous educator. And just like with Ms. Delaney said, you know, it's education is extremely important. And I feel that the best way to succeed in life is to have the education. Students can get scholarships uh, from playing sports and they can move on. And, you know, as everyone knows, the chance of making it to the pros is very slim. Now, I will never discourage any athlete to pursue that goal. I would, I would love more than nothing. I think the board can agree. We would love nothing more than every single one of our athletes making it to the pros. Now, however, that is not reality. We as elected officials have been given the power to maintain the safety of our students, of our staff. And while I like freedoms, we are in a position to have to do what's best for the community. Just like your congressmen, your senators, your governors, your president, they are all have to make decisions that impact what we do and what would be best for us while understanding we have freedoms. In this environment, I cannot see us allowing sports to be available when we cannot have the students in the classroom. Our focus is education, that's our primary goal. That's how students graduate from high school is they get their high school diploma. I can't fathom a, an explanation to state why I'm allowing building open for students to play sports, but I can't have them come in for education. We're doing all the cleaning in the world. Our custodians get all, should get all the credit for everything they've, they've done. This has been extremely challenging. And as these floors, these rooms are spotless. I mean, we might even eat off them, but the way this thing moves, it's, it's in the air. And unless you have someone standing there with Lysol spray in between two people, that virus will be floating in the air. And that's, that's where the concern I have with, with, with sports. You know, with this being indoors, it creates another difficulty in this. You're playing basketball, you are right in front of your, your defender, close contact. In wrestling, you are on top of the other person. You know, I can't see how we can conduct these sports and to prevent the transmission from one student athlete to the other when they're that close. And wearing masks, even if you're swimming, would be rather difficult to do once it gets wet. So I just don't see how this would work. You know, we have protocols in place. We have protocols in place in the event of, of actor and shooters. We don't want that to happen, but we have them in place. Yes, we have protocols in place for this, but as we've seen, even with colleges and the pros, this the protocols does not stop it from running rampant. I said it before, uh, reading a comment that the Ravens game, our game went from a Thursday to a Wednesday. It took a week to play because it just ravished the team, a team that has access to testing every single day, that has the ability to enact stricter protocols than any school district can. If it can go through them, it can go through us. And we've seen during the past, our football teams had to have games postponed due to outbreaks. We've had athletes come down with it. We've had students come down with it. You've watched other districts have to postpone and cancel games due to this. I mean, th there's not enough protocols in the world that we can do right now that would 
guarantee 100% that no one's getting sick. As for litigation stuff, yes, we have seen that the legislation was vetoed. So now any business can be open to a potential lawsuit should anything happen. And I really am terrified of the fact that if that does happen, what kind of financial distress we will be in. And with education, I, I wanna see our kids in school first before to learn before anything else is that is our primary objective. And I want everyone being there in a safe manner. You know, we can't have, I, I just, I, I don't wanna have our students in there, you know, in, in unsafe conditions and just start opening up against the uh, recommendation of our administration. You know, they are in the buildings day in, day out. They are also tasked with responsibilities, kids. Yes, parents are free to make choices of their students. They have choice to go to different schools. They have choice what to do outside of school. You know, what, they, what sports they want to play, what extra curricular activities they want to do. But as administration and as us elected officials, we have to make sure that we are keeping our students safe. That anything within the district boundaries is our responsibility. Now, it, 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 it's funny that when we're talking about this, you know, giving kids the parents the option to, to play sports. The one thing that we're not talking about is that a choice to attend school. They can choose which school to go to, but they can't choose not to go to school. And right now we are telling, we have told all uh, families that we are shutting down the school due to the virus increase. There is no choice with that. That's, that's what it is. That's how we have decided we are gonna keep our students safe and our community members safe by shutting down the school. Yeah, we all know that remote education is not a replacement. That is completely obvious and nobody here loves it but it's what we have to do. And luckily we have this technology unlike we did 20 years ago, back in 1919, where we would have been forced to shut down a school completely with no education. So we have this to give us something while we get through it. You know, also when they're in schools, we're not giving anybody a choice to have them wear masks in the building. Again, it's our safety protocol for that. That is what we've agreed on and that's how we're doing it. So. Optional mask wearing is, I don't think is acceptable. And yeah, you know, playing basketball would be a little tough wearing it because of breathing. But point is the masks are, you know, are proven to definitely help with this. If our students have to wear masks in the classroom, if our staff has to wear them in the building, everyone should have to be wearing them, even if the sports. So in conclusion, I just do not feel that this would be an appropriate step to take with the three weeks we have between now and Christmas and seeing as what happened with Halloween, how everything blew up after that. Mr. Gallagher said we had Thanksgiving. We have the Arab winter holidays, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, New Year's. All that comes in. I have no idea what these numbers can be. No one knows what they're gonna be. I'm hoping they're low, but that's just a hope. We will not know until it's all said and done. And I feel we need to do everything we can to protect our students to protect our communities and our families. Because so I can't help but think we wanna you know, play a game and yet we have members that are not even able to see loved ones in a hospital you know, while they're sick and God forbid, pass away. This is the reality of the situation we're in. So, and I also wanna, you know, can also think that we let this happen, where, where does it end? We've already decided that you know, rentals are going to keep going on against administrative res, you know, recommendations. We're looking at the at these uh, winter sports going on. You know, we've mentioned clubs today get to go. And if clubs are going, again, when do the students come in for education? And it would just be very careless of us and unsafe to start opening up the doors for everything, um, given the current climate. If we had the numbers we did back in the summertime, that would be a completely different conversation. But it's not we have to deal with what's going on now. And my thoughts are for the safety of our students, the safety of our community, I just feel be in our best interest to hold off until the uh, date of January 4th. That was in the letter that came out. All right, now everyone's gone around. Are there anyone who has additional comments? Make a motion to call the question. 
Okay. We're, we're going to shut this down again. That's good. Second it. All right. Well, fortunately, we have a we have a motion by uh, Mrs. Sarucci, a second by Mrs. Warning. Now, I know the last one we had a. Is this for the call to question or the overall vote to approve? Because I know the oh, last question. one was a bit. Just to question. call the question and end discussion. Okay. Is it just to call the question and end discussion? All right, Mrs. Isha, whenever you are ready. Okay. Mr. Gottman. No. Mr. McIntyre. Hard no. Mr. Ritter. Boy, this is a tough one. Oh boy, um, call the question. Should we have more discussion? Gonna change it no, time. the answer is no. Good morning. Yes. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Caleri? Aye. Mrs. Cerucci? Aye. Mrs. Delaney? No. Mr. Gallagher? No. Motion fails to call the question. Okay. So the question is, I'm hoping we don't go for another hour, but I want to make sure everyone has what they want to say to be out there. So now that we have questions still re, uh, resuming, is there, once again, is there anybody who'd like to make additional comments? Yes, so Brian, this is John. I'd like to toss this just to Dr. Short in case he has some comments and Mr. Hall if they have some comments because now they've heard from the board members and they've heard all the emails read. And so they might have some additional thoughts that sort of could color in between the lines that, that they, they hadn't thought of uh, previously. So if we could just have Dr. Short and M Mr. Hall jump in for a second. If they have anything, that's okay. If not, that's, that's okay too. Uh, if I could just add, Mr. Ritter, that um, first off, um, I want to thank everyone, uh, all the community members who have um, responded uh, with their thoughts and opinions. Uh, they are appreciated. Um, I have had multiple meetings with superintendents. The, uh, Bill, you're cutting out. Could you speak a little more uh, forcefully into the mic, please? Thanks. Is that better? That's good. Thanks. Okay. Uh, I've had multiple meetings uh, with the Allegheny Intermediate Unit, and um, we are, as superintendents throughout the region, uh, looking for not only a little bit more guidance from our governor, uh, but also through our state organizations for athletics, um, perhaps for a uh, more reasonable approach to how we're working things. It's kind of been dropped down to the lower levels. And a lot of superintendents and, and school districts like we are, are, are really debating this difficult subject. And um, I, I do know that uh, there are multiple opinions uh, that have been gracefully um, provided here today. And uh, for, first and foremost, our responsibility as a, a district, and we always reference our, our mission statement, is to help the the welfare of our, our students and employees. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I just want to thank everyone for uh, the information that they provided today. Uh, but, uh, you know, as far as the administration, uh, we remain committed to uh, our initial uh, guidance and um, delivering of uh, really what we feel is safe for everyone involved. So um, I'll, I'll defer to Mr. Hall if he has anything else to add. Just wanted to sort of echo uh, Dr. Short's sentiments, uh, listening to the well articulated and, um, and passionately given arguments and, and discussion points by, by this board. I've never been more confident in the people that are leading our district. I know that this group takes a lot of grief because sometimes like referees, uh, you know, half the people are unhappy with whatever decision you make. Um, so again, I know it's a difficult decision to make. Uh, and, and again, there are so many points for and against that were well articulated and, and well thought out. And, um, and I certainly uh, give a lot of uh, appreciation to those who took the time and, and made the effort to go through them. Just a couple quick points there, as Dr. Short had referenced, there's a meeting with the PIAA next week, the 9th. Uh, they're gonna clarify a little bit about masks and what to do if teams are in disagreement over wearing masks. 
while in competition. And I think that's a point that we'll have to address going forward. You know, um, it, and certainly as a response to that, it might be much clearer. It might not be. Um, and the whip eel is going to piggyback off of that meeting on December 10th and tell us what you would do in case, in, you know, in the past, if there was a COVID issue, the game was a no contest. They're going to talk about what to do if one team doesn't want to wear masks and the other does and so forth. So it's still a very fluid and very confusing issue at the state level. And, and we would love to see more guidance come in. The last point I'd like to make, and I know it's been a long meeting, so I don't want to belabor it. Um, the one thing I'm very comfortable with is that we have been very consistent with screening our student athletes. And, and just to put it in perspective, the only people um, that have been screened in our in any schools um, are our student athletes. Um, you know, we don't we don't have the ability necessarily to screen every student. We don't screen every teacher, every administrator, every uh, cafeteria worker, every um, every visitor. Um, we basically um, have screened. So as a as a coach, you know, I got screened every day, and all of our athletes got screened every day, and again, that resulted in a great deal of data accumulated. Um, and and again. Uh, within these teams, it's an either or proposition. You know, we can either compete or we can't. Um, I wish we had a way to, uh, to do it remotely. It's not feasible in this day and age. So the, um, the difficulty becomes, you know, can we conduct these things safely? And I'm very confident that we can conduct these things as safely as possible. And if we can't, uh, or we find that we're having an increase or a surge within any of our programs, we have the ability to shut them down or to adjust whatever we need to adjust. Um, I, and I, last point is uh, quickly is that um, as the athletic director and as a coach, clearly um, much of my passion and my, my livelihood is, is built into athletics. So I just wanna make sure that uh, if we disagree on any points here, uh, please understand that I'm just trying to advocate for those that are sort of under my charge as a leader within the athletic department and, and to speak for those people that I represent as the athletic director, um, meaning no uh, offense to any administrator or, or board member if I you know, would disagree uh, in this discourse. Uh, that's all, thanks. Okay, thank you, Dr. Short and Mr. Hall. Is there anybody else who'd like to add any additional comments? I just want to make one thing, uh, Mr. Gottman. Yes. Mandate that Governor Wolf came out with about, you know, everything shutting down till January 1st. That was made in July. That was even before numbers spiked or anything. So he already had this date, time, whatever set say, before seeing what was coming on. So there has been no change to that. So I'm just saying he had made, you know, pulled that date out. So I really feel that has nothing to do with what even like with the schools or anything like that. And that's all. Uh, you are correct. I do remember that. Um, and I believe the even the uh, departments of health did uh, change things around whenever the fall sports were, were happening uh, due to the fact that majority of them were taking place outside. And that did uh, help get those going. Um, I think right now, the reason why it's being brought up again is due to the massive increase as well as with the winter season everybody moves indoors so with poor air circulation that does factor into a lot of this and you know i cannot speak for for him but my belief is brought the data up again just with uh, the current situation and everyone now moving indoors uh if i may uh respond to that real quick dr short Yes. Uh, uh, after hearing what Val just said, and I think she makes some excellent points there, but just for, for clarity, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but what she's speaking of, has there been any actual updated information in the last couple of weeks or month uh, with state recommendations moving forward with athletics or extracurricular activities? Dr. Short. Oh, I just sent me a text. His computer just died. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so Mr. I guess we... Mr. McIntyre, ask Mr. Hall. I think he would probably know. Okay, I think, yeah. Uh, Coach, if you want to uh, touch on that. Um, we all, we also have... Because my understanding is that uh, the, the decision made and announced by Dr. Short on Wednesday 
uh, to postpone all in-class instruction as well as activities was in accordance with uh, state recommendations. Yeah, I believe that to be true as well. Um, the PDE has given us specific guidelines when it refers to substantial transmission and positivity rates. So I know that um, we have followed that uh, recommendation as far as going remote. And again, I think part of the ability to do that is the fact that although everyone agrees that remote learning, virtual learning is not the same as in classroom instruction, um, we have that option. Um, it's, a, it's an easy, safe option to you know, to basically close the campus in that regard. Um, so the recommendations that have been consistently made and, and, and very often updated by the governor's office have included a number of recommendations that, you know, we haven't followed. You know, we haven't talked about in this meeting um, that of their 60 some districts uh, that were surveyed that are going full remote and continuing with athletics. Uh, because again, it's a different situation in terms of being an either or. Um, you can't just move it to virtual or remote. You can either have it or you can't. And many districts have, have gone that route. So um, again, recommendations have been, have been given throughout. Um, mandates are few. Uh, one of the mandates we spoke at length about earlier was the mask mandate. And that's again, uh, something that was new or newer um, as far as recommendations, uh, several of them have been in place since the summertime before any resumption of athletics um, and others have continued to be updated or, or stayed the same throughout going into winter sports. The PIAA stance and the WIPIL stance uh, was to go forward with the winter sports season on schedule. Um, and again, that's another issue altogether as far as not being in sync with any of our opponents in conference, other school districts, if, uh, if we don't practice. Uh, there are required numbers of practices before you can scrimmage or play a game. Um, so those are things, again, that are all in play in this decision. Um, I know I wandered off a bit there, but I hope that answered the question. Coach Don Hall, this is John Ritter. One quick question. You know, I know that we all want to have the kids come back to school. Some schools in our area, like Divine Mercy Academy, are in person five days a week. We would all love to Gateway School District to be able to meet five days a week. And so it seems to be awfully uh, a, a large step for us to just open the doors and have everyone come back. But I think we have before us right now the possibility to put a test case, a test population forward that would be athletics or maybe some other groups. And if we could have those, that, those groups begin to meet and do what they do in person, we could test to see the viability of that. If they instantly all get sick, that's one thing. If none of them get sick, that's another thing. So the question is, if, if we would shut down all the schools in Pennsylvania, all 500 school districts, and just stop learning, does that guarantee that no students or their parents would get the illness? Of course not. That's, that's nonsensical. So since, since the opposite is nonsensical, we've got to find a way to, to test our theories. Otherwise, as many of the school board members here and other school board members from the other uh, districts, um, are, we're caught in a loop where we just keep going around and around the mulberry bush, not being able to um, put a test case forward and get statistics for it. So I think that we have an opportunity here to, to ask the athletic director and the, the other athletic directors to, to get the kids to come back and maybe some sports or some clubs or something, and then find out what the result of that is, and then we can use that as leverage to find out how best to begin to move the, the students back in school, either part-time or full-time. So that's one opportunity I don't want us to slip by because we're um, blinded on the one side from not wanting anybody to get you know, the COVID disease, but uh, on the other side, we don't want the students to suffer from not having the other essential element of uh, education, which would be uh, mental and social and uh, emotional, financial, uh, other types of health that are just uh, as critical without which you can't have education. So, um, that Mr. Ritter, in, sure. uh, can I re respectfully request for you to rephrase that? Um, sure. Um, alluding to our students being an experiment, the uh, for, for overall society, I do not think that's what you mean, but sure. Uh, no. Seem to, let's see if 
let's see if any of these get, kids get sick. And if something worse happens, then we won't do anything else. I know that's not your intent. So I wanted to see if you could clarify. Sure. Um, in schools, what we usually do is do something and then test to see whether, you know, it succeeded or not. So it's, it's the clinical aspect of this that I'm, that I'm interested, the numbers aspect. If we have like the hockey club that gets together and follows all the protocols and they have no outbreaks, then we have a statistic to work with. We can ask the question, how many outbreaks were there? Zero. Now we have a number. If we have no numbers, then we can't know whether having them to get together or not get together is the correct thing to do. That's all. And may I add one other, uh, sure. what I believe salient point, uh, Mr. Ritter and Mr. Gallagher, uh, Reverend Gallagher V. Um, there's there's no evidence that these uh, that this virus is passed between athletes, even in even in wrestling throughout the summer club wrestling throughout the uh, throughout the uh, basketball uh, AU seasons, summer baseball through the football season. We don't have any certified cases, even at the NFL level that one of the emailers referenced, you know, with their shutdowns, the cases that are occurring and the ones that occurred within our district were contracted outside of school, whether at a party or a get together or a sleepover or a Buffalo Wild Wings. And then they passed it to some teammates because they are in close contact with their teammates. So there's a there's a, a linear way that a team can get infected, but it doesn't get infected because somebody suddenly contracts it while they're at practice and playing defense and basketball. They give it to the person they're covering. It, it happens because it happens outside of that transmission. And that's one of the encouraging things about the numbers like the hockey team and others, and even the ones with the football team, uh, those cases were, were c contracted outside of the school setting. I um, think that that's exactly the thing that happened with the Baltimore Ravens, the Pittsburgh Steelers, while they were on the field and they, none of the players had the diseases, they couldn't pass it to one another. And because they couldn't pass it to one another because they didn't have it, they couldn't catch it. However, when these players went home, something happened. <laughs> that's where they got infected. And then they brought it back to the field. And that's where it was caught. And that's why they shut the sport down for a little while. So you have to be able to uh, v validate you know, the origin of the uh, infection of the disease. And but then you have something to work with. I think I, I, I'm sorry, I have to interject here. I, that argument is effective whenever you say patient one sure. was affected for, infected from outside. Right. Patients two, three, four, five, six were infected, in fact, from practices. If you're exactly. Right. So to say that there's no infection within the practices and stuff is, is, is a logical fallacy. Exactly you know it does transmit through practices it does th transmit through work it does transmit through stores we know that exactly the origin of that the uh, um i would i would think that somebody that contracts it the uh doesn't really care where it came from they it matters where they got it from and that's why we have this resolution before us right now, this motion, right. yeah. whereby if we don't allow athletics, is it guaranteed that no, none of our students or their parents will get the disease? In other words, it's almost a nonsensical question when you phrase it that way for the, for the exact reason that you said, Scott. Yeah. Uh, John, I don't know whether you're a gambling person, uh, whether you no. go to rivers or whatever, but no. see, a lot of this is a gamble. And unfortunately, it is because the coronavirus is so new to all of us. We're dealing with something that we've never had to deal with before. And the Bingo. risk there, whether uh, whether we talk about the contact tracing and, and, um, and how that go is going to work and how it has or will not affect, we're trying to be err on the side of caution and be proactive. I think that's what you're it, hearing a lot of us say. Exactly. Uh, and yes. that's where it becomes very difficult because we can't say and don't know for sure, uh, Don Hall, whether or not, even if certain things haven't occurred yet. And as you said, you are trying to do whatever is precautions, uh, the precaution uh, measures that we can take, but we just have no guarantees with this. And that's why I guess you hear me so passionate about erring on the side of caution because we don't know what to expect and how to I, handle this. I agree. Uh, if I may, uh, Mr. Ritter. Um, sure. Uh, I, between the discussion between you and uh, 
Mr. Hall, uh, a couple of things I just wanted to, to ask for maybe clarification or to point out some uh, some issues. Uh, the argument seems to be it's completely safe to have practice as long as nobody's infected. I, I think that's that goes without saying. However, as we've just stated, when somebody is inf infected, regardless of where they you know, became infected, if they got infected at home, and they brought it to practice, now it's not safe. Right. Now we are at risk of expanding that infection, increasing the rate of transmission. Exactly. Okay. Well said. But remember, we, we have all those protocols in place where we're doing temperature checks. We're telling people if they have cold symptoms to stay home. Like nobody is suggesting we don't continue to do those things to try to keep our athletes safe. Uh, Coach Hall, uh, this fall, did we have any documented cases of athletes spreading COVID to one another during you know activities? We did not have cases where we could ascertain with any certainty where they contracted the disease. We had athletes on the same team, but the contact tracing showed that they were also the same guys who rode together, you know, to and from practice. They hung out together at social gatherings. They were best friends, uh, essentially. So we had uh, the cases that we had documented within teams had happened either uh, as family members. We had some sibling swimmers who who uh, contracted the disease. We had uh, football players who uh, initially, we believe contracted disease somewhere outside of, out of school and, uh, and don't know at what point it was transmitted. Um, I think it is important, important to note that um, if a student athlete, and the primary key element of that screening is if we have any concern that we have a student athlete who's ill in any symptomatics, and I get we have some potential for asymptomatic issues, but um, uh, ultimately we're talking about having a, um, having the ability to say that athlete's not going to be at practice. And we even, you know, recommend, and again, we can't mandate it, but we recommend that they see their primary health provider, primary care physician. They, they see, they get tested before they come back to practice. And, uh, and we will always err on that side of caution. So um, we, we think there's a, a plan in place to manage keeping ill players from from practice and potentially, um, you know, infecting others. The, the point I made earlier is they've, they've shown where it hasn't transmitted from team to team, meaning opponents. You know, like if, uh, if a player on the Ravens has it, they've shown that there's no, you know, you play the game and then, then somebody on the opposing team gets it either, um, but there which are, is there encouraging. Are cases, I believe in the NFL where teammate to teammate, they did pass it through you know, uh, normal football activities. Uh, but or, I, I, yeah, I, off the yeah, field, yeah, locker and, room. Yeah. Yeah. So th thank you again, uh, Coach. I know this is a long meeting for you Saturday. I, I appreciate your, your input. Um, just a couple more things I want to add. Um, one. I'm back you know, on, Mr. McIntyre. Oh, thank, thank you, Dr. Short. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> just um, I, 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 we, if I could just say a few things, Dr. Shorten, and maybe if we can go back to where we were, if you, yeah. if you care to, if you care to add anything. So is this a little redundant. Are we going to, you know, vote soon? Yes. I believe Dr. Short was cut off earlier because his computer died. He's now back online. We voted against the call to question. We are now continuing discussion. So if I may, uh, the, the idea of, you know, we don't know where the kids might get it and bring it here, however, you know, I think that's an excellent point. However, looking at it in terms of the protecting the district, if a kid gets it at home, this board in this district is not exposed to liability for that contraption. If it happens on our property, because we are disregarding state recommendation, we may be on the hook. So we are exposing ourselves legally. Um, the, you know, the other argument that's been made today, and, and I think it's, it's, an, it's a well, it's a good argument. We should be allowing parents to decide for their kids what's the best, what the best path forward is. And I don't necessarily disagree with that. However, this very board, several discussions during the reopening plan about special education, and we did not give parents, special ed students, the choice to have their students in class five days a week. We did not give parents a choice. 
Wednesday when Dr. Short decided, based on state recommendations and the board approved board approved reopening, we were going to go all first. So if we're going to offer choices to our parents, allow parents to make these choices for their children, why are we neglecting those choices in favor of their choice when it comes to athletics? Good point. Thank you. And Dr. Short, uh, I, I think actually we, uh, Dr. Don Hall covered what I actually asked you earlier, uh, pretty succinctly. So you're off the hook for now. If I may, <laughs> thank you. If I may be for Dr. Short, um, and then you can conclude. Um, with our athletic teams that are in season right now, they're practicing elsewhere. My concern too is how safe are the places where they're practicing. I know that our custodial staff, maintenance, everything is keeping Gateway pick and span. There's no safer place to have our students but at Gateway. So that's another thing to look at. I mean, we're doing everything we possibly can to keep everything clean and for everyone. And, you know, to let these kids go elsewhere, we're doing a just disjustice to them too. So that's it, Dr. Short, it's all you. No, um, th thank you, Mrs. Warning and uh, Mr. McIntyre, thank you. Uh, at, at this point, I believe that we've, uh, debated had everyone you know provide an opportunity to give their viewpoints uh, along with our community uh, so I simply defer back to Mr. Gottman to proceed uh, with the vote if everyone is finished. May I ask you one clarification uh, something Val said are we having yes. practices right now like currently since there are no pra there are no practices currently right now. Okay, then I'm not sure what Mrs. Morning was referring to when she said they're practicing elsewhere. What they're, what other teams are doing, they're getting together not as a gateway team, but as a group of kids and, you know, playing whatever. And that's what they're doing. Yeah, this is what I'm, I discussed this when we were at our meeting and I said, just because we shut down sports at Gateway doesn't mean we're going to keep kids from getting together. They are going to continue to meet. So the idea that if we, you know, close down our facilities that it's going to stop the gathering is a false, um, it's just a false assumption. And what we have and what we're doing to our parents is we're sending them to facilities now where they have to pay. They're going to the gyms, they're going to gymnasiums, they're going to basketball courts, they're going to other areas on the dollar of the parents. And again, those that, those that can't afford to do that are left behind. And I say that's a choice that the parents make because I don't feel that our facility as the school should be the one to do that. If they wanna gather elsewhere, then, then so be it. That's the choice that they should make in doing so and not use but our, our facility. Remember who owns our facilities, it's our taxpayers. We don't own our facility. As I said, and it's the parents' do. choice. It is the parents' that's choice. Right. I agree with you. I totally agree with you. This should be the parents' choice. And there again, Mrs. Delaney um, and the rest of the board, Gateway has the facilities. That's why we need, if we are going to allow these students to practice, they need to be able to come back to Gateway with swimming and everything. We even heard in the meeting on Tuesday that the spray and the mist that they use is comparable to the water that they have in the spring, which I had clarification. Um, like with the chlorine and everything, it's killing everything. So not to even let our swimmers be in a pool that is going to, let's see, uh, Mr. Brown, you can explain this, just the sanitary and everything that goes into the chemicals in the pool that if anything comes up, it's killing these infections or whatever. Hang on one second, Dr. Short, you're getting a lot of chatter. Could you please go on mute? I'm sorry, Val, go ahead. That's how I says. I was just asking Mr. Brown to explain, you know, as far as the cleaning, you know, with the pool, we're not, we're doing this justice to our swimmers. They're doing, you know, dry land practices elsewhere, not on campus, but, you know, our pool 
that we had comparison at the meeting, what they're using in the poll is comparable to what they're using to list the furnitures in the classrooms. Mr. Brad, can I ask you to intervene on that? Surely. Um, in a swimming pool, the disinfection properties of chlorine are there to kill pathogens. And that's what we're dealing with now. Uh, we also use one of our products in the sanitation through our foggers is a very similar uh, product. It is just one of the uh, products that we use for disinfection, excuse me, sanitation. Uh, and that's what that does. That's why swimming in general, you know, is, is really safe because of the uh, the swimming pool chemicals are meant to kill many things. Um, we use many other products throughout disinfection of the hard surfaces, but that's what uh, one of our products is for, for uh, adding to the sanitation of our facilities. Mr. Brown, uh, the, chem the chemical you mentioned that uh, we use for the fogger that's similar in nature and I imagine in, in basic chemical makeup uh, to the water in the pool. If we filled the swimming pool with that chemical, uh, would you feel comfortable diving head first into it? Yes. So it's not high, more concentrated than it's, it, we could essentially use the swimming pool water in the fogger, it, is that it, correct? It, they are extremely similar. They're a chlorine based um, and Again, that product is for sanitation, not disinfection, but we disinfect and sanitize. Uh, we use them together. Okay, and, and, and I, I appreciate that. Um, however, I, I think it's obvious that um, the water that's in the pool does nothing to protect anybody that's in the building, not in the water. That's correct. Okay. For the record, the swimmers do wear masks when they're out of the water. Um, we had it. This is for the. This is not for my board members. This is for the public. The emails that we receive, they wear masks when they get up to the block to jump in the water. They take their mask off and put it in the Ziploc bag and drop it before they get in the pool. So even our swimmers are masking and social distancing when they're out of the water. Uh, just, just one. Yeah, like that our, our discussion is coming to a, a, a conclusion. That's a good thing. Um, yeah, I, I think it's important for us to, to uh, appreciate the, the time that's been taken in, in this discussion, the background study. The, uh, it's, I also appreciate the, uh, everyone who has taken the time to, to fill out those questionnaires, to answer those questionnaires. The, uh, um, I can I can attest that the the marching band, in my opinion, went above and beyond. The uh, if the students weren't playing, they had they had a mask on. They uh, you know carrying equipment back up and forth and walking through the parking lot to their cars. They they remain masked. So there's a the, uh, so I think that whenever we have um, circumstances like that, whether it's our coaches or our educators we should we should be grateful that they've taken the recommendations and the plan and they have utilized it to, to the fullest they uh, so i think we need to in the midst of this conversation sometimes it can seem like we're we're disparaging the the efforts that have been taken and that's not the case from anybody's uh point of view um and and for the general community one quick way that we can resolve extremely difficult conversations like this is to follow the advisories, to wear our masks, don't go to places unless we, we need to. The, uh, we, 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 we flattened this curve previously the, uh, because we followed those. And if we, if we sink back down into doing those type of things, then this board won't have to meet to have conversations about what we have and what we, we don't have. Um, it's still where it 51% uh, of people aren't answering the contact tracing questions, which makes it more difficult the, uh, to resolve these. So, you know, that's just my hope that we can, we can find our way out of this as a community and rather than just a school board. All right. Thank you for that. Um, 
And I, I do appreciate everybody's uh, comments. You know, this is a you know, hot topic item and you know, it's great that we were able to get everything that we want to say. Um, and yeah, as also Mr. Gallagher did uh, allude to that, yeah, we are pretty much getting towards the end of our conversation. I mean, we could do this all day long, you know, but you know, eventually a decision has to be made. So what I want to do, and I feel there, there's one last person that we should just hear from. I like his thoughts and then we can um, move on from that. And that is our pandemic coordinator, Dr. Chakey. I would just like his thoughts on, on this as the coordinator. Well, I appreciate everyone's participation today. Uh, you know, it, it is, it's a, it's a very difficult decision. Uh, how, do you, how do you look at a situation that is pretty much no win because we, we're here just to make sure that students have the best possible educational experience. But, you know, at times you have to outweigh that with, um, you know, you have, to, you have to take a look at the whole picture and, and decide, you know, is the risk versus the reward? It's something that I, that I always try to, um, to think about. And uh, I just ask that um, everyone today sort of think about that, is the risk versus the, um, outweigh the reward. Okay, thank you, Dr. Chakey. You know, Brian, I, I, I beg you and I apologize. I know how long we've been here. I have just one question to ask. Um, if we approve this today and we go forward with this, is there any kind of uh, measure in place with this resolution to where we have a ceiling to where we will say, all right, if it gets to this point in the community and in the county with the guidelines that we're supposed to be following, in other words, if we approve this, what's going to trigger us to actually postpone sports uh, moving forward? All right, we can make this last question. I do feel that is an excellent question. Um, either Dr. Short or Mr. Hall, can any of you provide an answer to that? I would, I would defer to Dr. Short. I, I don't know that we have a, um, we have an idea exactly of, uh, of a number uh, that would trigger that stop. Certainly program by program, we have protocols in place. Um, it'd be interesting to see the results of the PIAA and the Whitfield meetings, if there's any more guidance given toward what might constitute their opinion of, of what might cause them to cease, uh, you know, the operation of winter sports if there's uh, if there's a number out there, but I would defer that to, to Dr. Short and Dr. Chakey. All right, and I, I think you're correct, uh, Mr. Hall, that once we receive some more information from the PIAA, uh, perhaps uh, they will institute certain guidelines uh, for when they would potentially either postpone uh, the the current winter sports schedule. Uh, put a moratorium in uh, two weeks, three weeks to allow the case loads um, to dissipate a little bit. Um, also, the, the, the governor uh, has, um, of course, the authority to shut us down, as he's done in the past, uh, back on March 13th. Uh, so um, if, if this motion would pass the way it is currently, uh, of course, with numbers and case counts, uh, as a board, we can always make that determination once again with another special meeting if we have to. And um, uh, with monitoring of numbers, uh, if it gets to that case again, uh, of course, uh, it'd be in communication with the board to say, hey, uh, is it worth looking at again to reconvene and perhaps uh, uh, pause caseloads or uh, winter sports? Thank what's you. the date? What's the date of that meeting with the PIAA? December 9th. I would like to make a motion to table this resolution so that we can update it on that meeting, better type controls and uh, restrictions, and, and you know, better basically have a better idea of when how we're going to proceed. You were breaking up there. I believe I just. So you wanted to make the motion to table until that meeting's over? Yes, sir. So that we have all the available information and we can structure the proposal better uh, for him. Okay. So for part two here, we have a motion to table until 
Uh, December 9th. Is there any second? I second. Okay. Motion by Mr. McIntyre, second by Mrs. Delaney. Uh, questions or comments? Okay. Uh, seeing none, Bonnie, can we get a roll call there on the no table? There are no questions, Brian. It's not a motion to table. You don't take questions if there's a second. You just go to vote. Okay. Thank you for that. All right. So we'll go straight to the vote. Uh, Mrs. Eshaw, can we get a roll call? Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Ritter. I'm sorry, Mr. Ritter. John says no. Good morning. We're breaking up. No. Mr. Williams. No. Mr. Clary. No. Mrs. Cerucci. No. Mrs. Delaney. Yes. Mr. Gallagher. Yes. Mr. Gottman. Aye. Motion fails table. Okay. So I think at this point, um, the WIPIO meeting that will be coming up on the 9th is very important. Um, so I think the option now, what we can do to best serve our students, regardless of how this um, next vote goes, is, you know, with our career, once the ninth rolls in and we find out what's going on, uh, we can potentially reconvene for another uh, meeting uh, if we need to set the grounds for a cap on how many cases or what the stat would be in order to pause athletics. Brian, may I interrupt real quick? Um, yeah. If Coach Hall could just send us an update of what is discussed instead of us a meeting, it might not be necessary to have a meeting. If he could just keep us updated and if you feel that we should have a meeting, um, then by all means. Yeah, I thought that's what I said, but yes, because that, that, that works too. Either way, I want to make sure that the board and administration have the information so that we can make a thorough uh, decision on what we need to do going going from there. So, Mr. Hall, can you provide the information once you get it? Yes, there'll be basically two sets of information. I'll give you the the data we receive or whatever feedback we receive from the talking points from the PIAA on the 9th, and then the follow up meeting by the WIPIO on the 10th. Uh, which may be, you know, the same or may have some additional information that's specific to our uh, region. And district. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Now we're at the conclusion of this. Um, I will be asking for a motion for number two. We already have a motion. Oh, we do? Number two. Okay. All right. It's been going on so long, I forgot. Thank you. All right. Final vote. Mrs. Isha. Okay. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Mrs. Warning. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Polari. I'm sorry, I, I you were breaking up. Did you say Paul? Yes, Paul. Yeah. Is that an aye? Aye. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Cerucci? Aye. Mrs. Delaney? No. Mr. Gallagher? No. Mr. Gottman? No. Mr. McIntyre? No. Motion carries. Okay, Mrs. Eshaw, can you please scroll back up to the uh, agenda? I just wanna make sure I don't miss anything here. Sure. Thank you. All right, uh, with the with the end of this here, um, I'm gonna be first. Brian, I'd like to make a, a motion that since we've passed this now and we're enabling um, some activities, that would be the uh, athletic activities to continue, I'd like to make a motion to approve an approval to allow the district's clubs, programs, and extracurricular activities to convene effective December 5th, 2020. In other words, I'll open the door for the other groups who, who might want to get together, give them the permission to do this if they want. Scott will second that. All right. We have a motion by Mr. Ritter, second by Mr. Williams to extend this to the clubs and additional extracurricular activities, correct? 
that, right, and it would, of course, already be under all the rules that have already been set up for all extracurricular activities and clubs. I mean, everything that's already in place would just remain in place. Um, okay, uh, starting with questions, comments, I'll just start off first. Um, I think with this, um, I don't think a lot of make motions as a president, but I think it'd be wise to possibly table due to um, we'd have to make sure that if this is happening and these clubs are going on that we need to know who's going to be recording the information. Brian, how's it's going to you be can monitored. ask somebody to make a motion to table. Uh, before, we, before, we get to, before we get to that that place, um, this motion is out of order uh, in that it was not part of the original agenda. So we'd have to even entertain a motion to put this on the agenda in either in order for us to the, uh, take a vote or have conversation on the agenda itself. That's, that's incorrect. Uh, Mr. That is Gallagher, correct. That's actually incorrect. Uh, the wording on that policy does not actually cover special meetings, unfortunately. Well, just as we did with, with uh, our athletics one, we do need to have a motion, have it put onto the agenda, and then we can discuss it. Yeah, but okay, it doesn't require a uh, super majority, though. No, it does not. Okay. All right, okay. so Mr. Ritter, if you want to redo it, do your original motion to put it on the agenda. Yes, I'd like to put on the agenda the following motion. Approval to allow the district's clubs, programs, and extracurricular activities to convene effective 2020-1205. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, uh, once again, the motion put on the agenda by Mr. Ritter, second by Mr. Williams. Um, comments or questions? I have one question. Uh, are we going to provide transportation to and from, or at least to or from all of these activities and uh, athletics and everything? Obviously, we haven't discussed this, and that would, I don't think, be decided, but I'm sure if we need transportation, all Mrs. Isha has to do is pick up the phone. Okay, because I, I, think, I think failing to provide that uh, transportation uh, could potentially raise some equity issues. <clears throat> I feel we should ask our Department of Transportation uh, person, Mrs. Eshaw. I don't believe that would be my, my decision. That would be an administrative decision because that could come with um, an extra cost to the district because we're already going to be paying the bus companies for the regular routes. So that would come at an additional cost, I believe. All right, well, then Dr. Short, how easy would it be to obtain transportation? It, it, at, at this point, I would have to talk to Mrs. Isha, determine routes uh, and activity buses. Uh, so this is something that we could definitely examine and look at uh, as early as Monday. Are we providing any transportation for athletics? No. So, Mr. Ritter or Mr. McIntyre, if we're not providing the transportation for athletics, why do we have to provide it for other extracurricular activities? Typically, extracurricular activities happen at the end of the school day. Yeah, but we and don't we, have are providing, school, we are providing transportation to parents who choose to send their children into the building. And we did not we're do providing it. Them transportation to the building, which facilitates them participating in extracurricular activities. We don't have activity buses, though. We did not provide all sports. I, am, I, I, I don't think this discussion is really relevant at this it's time. It's absolutely relevant. No, it isn't. Well, that's the opinion. You've spoken it. I disagree. What I'm saying is we provide transportation to the building whenever school is open. That is no longer available. And we discontinued activity buses a long time ago, though. Well, I'm not talking hey, about folks, In order for us to discuss this, I think it needs to be put on the agenda. Otherwise, it's it's a non-topic. So I'd like to try to put it on the agenda so that we could discuss it. Yeah, yeah let's go with the roll call here to see if it'll be on the agenda for, for starters here. So Mrs. Isha? Mrs. Warning? Yes. Dr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Caleri? Aye. Mrs. Carucci? Yeah, yes. Mrs. Delaney? Yes. Mr. Gallagher? Yes. Mr. Gottman? Aye. Mr. McIntyre? No. Mr. Ritter? Aye. 
Okay, so now it's on the agenda. I believe I need to seek another motion. To so John makes the motion that he made. Second. Okay, motion by Mr. Ritter, second by Mr. McIntyre. Now, question for a comment. discussion. Great. Okay. All right. So if I may, if, if I may, just pick up before I was interrupted. Sure. And, and and not and I don't mean by you, John. That was actually an excellent point. We were out of order, not discussing what we should be discussing and when. Uh, my my point about the buses, and I understand we we eliminated activity buses, but that was getting activity kids home from activities. We currently, while the schools are open, provide transportation to the buildings which facilitates them participating in after-school extracurricular activities. If the building is closed, we are no longer providing that transportation. And I think that is a, a key element. So Rick, this is John. I, I think this is a very good point that you're bringing up about buses, but there, there are other considerations that need to be brought forward like personnel and doors and keys and lights and heating and all the other things that go around with any club or any organization or any extracurricular activity and cleaning, etc. So all of this stuff, these questions would have to get tossed to the administration and if maybe a club can't meet for some reason then Dr. Short just says can't do it right now maybe two weeks from now in other words he come we give him the permission to come up with some protocol that can cause the other organizations the other clubs and extra activities to occur if they can that's all yeah and we just we just voted to override that authority for the record um you make a good point. There's still a lot of uh, questions and, and logistics here that need to be answered. And I think this is why it was uh, inappropriate for us to hold this meeting in such a fast manner without getting all of our ducks in a row. I, I think it's irresponsible for us to vote on something and then figure out the wording later. It's like signing your name on the blank contract and then giving it to the, to the lawyer and saying, ah, fill the rest out. Here, I think it's I like. more like him giving direction. I think Mr. Ritter's trying to give direction to administration to say if we allow athletics to continue, we should do the same for the other extracurricular activities. Almost. If it's possible for some of the extracurricular activities to meet, then the door should be open for them to be able to meet. Or if the parents want to or don't want to, it's up to them. So this opens the door for them to have that freedom. May I make a suggestion? Is it possible to send out to all the clubs groups, even the winter guards, because I saw that they were postponing to see if they want to move forward? And, if, you know, once you get the list of who wants to move forward, whether they want to be in the building or whatever, put it out to the groups, to the clubs. And then I would say no, Val. Have. I say the, the first um, order of events should be for us to give Dr. Short the permission to be able to conduct that question so this would do that's that. what i mean yeah that's what i mean have okay. them put it out the district um if i may i would like to see if anybody would like to make the motion to table it's only to get all the logistics of this done i mean this has literally just been sprung upon us in administration and while there are the protocols in place for the athletics that we've seen you know with the clubs it's a little different you know, again, it's our students here. I, for one, would like to make sure that if that is happening, that we have set protocols in place for them in terms of who's doing recording for the temperature, who's monitoring the students wearing masks, who's monitoring compliance. You know, if we have all that set up ready to go, I think, I, I mean, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I know myself, I feel more comfortable making the decision on that. Again, Brian, I, I completely agree with your point, but this is the first step that allows him to be able to ask that question. Well, as I say, once we get that question asked and we have the information to do this and how we can figure out how to have this all done, that would make this decision a whole lot easier. But we, we're, do, are you in favor of us having another special meeting just on this single vote? I think not. I, I'm guessing that, that it would be good to just open the door right now and then if some events, uh, extracurricular activities can occur, they, then they can. If not, then they can't. That's okay. I, 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 I'll, I'll make a motion to table this. And if there's a second, I, I'd like to speak to why. That's right, not how it works. I, I'll make the second, but this does effectively shut down. Discussion. You have to vote okay. now, table. Yeah, so we have a motion by Mr. Gallagher, second by Mr. McIntyre for tabling uh, Mr. Ritter's motion. 
Uh, Mrs. Esha. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Caleri. Aye. Mrs. Rucci. No. Mrs. Delaney. Aye. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Gottman. Aye. Mr. McIntyre. Aye. Mr. Ritter. No. Mrs. Warning. Aye. Okay, motion tables. Very good. Thanks, guys. Okay, hey, thank you. So um, I guess what we'll have to do is, uh, Dr. Short, uh, if you and your team want to figure out how the clubs will work and all the logistics behind everything, including transportation, once we have all that gathered, um, you know, let us know, and then we can proceed from there. Very good. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. Thank good you. Good job. Thank you. All right. We have been here a long time. This has been a long, tiring day. Again, I, I do want to thank everybody for being here, um, especially for the length of time. You know, this these decisions we make are not easy. Um, some will be happy, some will not. Unfortunately, that's the way, you know, it is. Um, with our decision here, I do want to just put out there that all of our, all those who are participating, um, please follow all protocols. Please wear masks. Please, if you are feeling sick, stay home, see your doctor, get tested, do everything to protect yourself, your families, your friends, your community. You know, yeah, we, there is a vaccine coming out. It's going to be a while before ourselves, our students can get to it. So I'm just asking everyone to please do everything you possibly can until that happens. With that, Motion, motion to adjourn. Motion yeah. to seconded. Okay. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to even say that. <laughs> All right. We got a motion by Mr. McIntyre to adjourn. Second by Mrs. Sarucci. All of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.